I'm gonna play the um. Uh, what am I doing? I'm gonna play the uh. The I'm dreaming of a white doomsday trailer. Jason mask promo. No, no. I'm gonna play the strangers pray at night trailer. Then uh, I'm dreaming of a white doomsday. Then the horror mask, Jason mask promo, and, and then, then our intro. and then our intro, yeah. And throughout the video, I'm going to play the Hellraiser Judgment trailer. Um, maybe have it off play into the side as well. And then I'm gonna have the New Jersey Horrorcon video play when we talk about that. Sounds good, bro. Ray, would you be able to constantly watch the comments? If it works. Okay. Yeah, I told him I would try to keep an eye on it too, just in case somebody oh, asks. We're live on Darren. YouTube. What? We're live on YouTube. Oh, we are? Yeah. Doesn't matter. There's no viewers yet. Okay. <clears throat> Let's round up our viewers now. We got one viewer. It's David Jeffrey on Facebook. Two. Sure. We have two now. I'm going to... How do I send a link to this on Facebook? We are live on the Horror Syndicate Facebook page. Um, you can just copy yeah. that link and just post it. Or share it. Whatever it offers you. You'll see your face. Oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, yeah. Before we go live, guys, think of a would you rather question because we'll have a, a quick round of that. Okay. I've got a fun one. Okay. It could be I'll horror try. related. It could be just fucking off the wall. Stupid, whatever. Yeah, just have fun with it, guys. Be organic. We're not, like, doing anything crazy. We're not going to have, like, a, uh, um, you know, Be organic. bottom of the barrel. It's called bottom of the barrel review. So how is your judgment, huh? All right. <laughs> I'm going to play the I'm Dreaming of a White Doomsday trailer. Here we go. Or it's going to be The Strangers. I forget which one I put first. They're pretty much the same movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I pirated it. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Your trailer is playing first, Mike. Excellent. Can they hear us right now? Yeah, not yet. Shouldn't be able to. Very good. Very good. Oh, they can't hear us, but they can hear your video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. They, they can't. Better be quiet, kid, or I'm going to have Santa choke you out. I <laughs> <laughs> was screening in Philly, and people were asking because the kid was there during the Q&A, and they're just like, wait, that's the kid? I'm like, he's not actually dead. That was movie magic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised we have not gotten an ounce of shit for that yet at all. No one has been like, no angry emails, no one's flipped out. I'm surprised. I was really expecting people to be really... I mean, they cry, but I always thought they were going to be pissed. I'm happy they're not, but I expected it. I'm so fucking blown out in this shot. Fuck this light. My porcelain skin doesn't fare well under these CFLs. I feel your pain, man. Did you get the daylight bulb? Yeah, I think it is. I don't know. It's like 20 watts too fucking bright. <laughs> it looks like dim as shit in my room, but on camera it looks like... It looks like you're in an aquarium or something. Yeah, you know what it looks like? It looks like one of those fucking Art X porn videos where it's like really, really like soft white light over everything. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah. Hey, Mike, I finally got to see the stall the other day. What's that? I finally saw watched the stall the other day. Oh, very cool. What do you think? <laughs> it was awesome. Thank you. I, I liked it a lot, fun. actually. That was a lot of fun. But, well, it was hell making it, but it was in retrospect, it was very fun. Yeah, the uh, where's, where's the follow up? You know, people have been asking me. Everyone wants a feature out of that. I was like, I really don't think you'd want to see that guy taking a shit for like two hours and stuff. But I mean, there's there's things you could do afterwards. You know, like with- yeah. Well, the joke on set was that like he comes out of the stall and then it cuts and you see the entire world is leveled except that bathroom stall. Like it's the only thing still standing, yeah. and then he goes on like some wild adventure. Yeah, like uh, what's that game uh, in the wasteland? I can't remember what it's called. Borderlands? Oh, not, no, not Borderlands. Uh, the one like radioactive fallout shelters and shit, and you get this... Metro 2033. Or Fallout? Fallout, fallout or Metro? Fallout. Yeah, I'm thinking of Fallout. Uh, Metro's a good game. Metro's fucking one of the best... The book series is amazing, too. It's one of the best apocalyptic anything ever made. I'm obsessed with Metro. Brian, someone says they can't hear anything. No, I can hear everything. I just listened to it on the cell phone. They hey, probably couldn't hear anything because we didn't play anything yet. Oh, yeah, it's playing through on Facebook. I just I sort of, yeah, got my fat face voice. I'm afraid to open Facebook because people are going to start messaging me. It's going to make that fucking ding. Let's see what happens. All right, here comes the intro. Okay. Ooh. All across the comic book products. Oh, All right. Okay. All righty. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to. The Horror Syndicate lives here tonight. My name is Brian Enright, and uh, this is our new season of The Horror Syndicate, uh, with our new show called The Horror Syndicate Lives. Uh, basically, we, what we got going on tonight is we're talking about horror, we're promoting horror work from other um, directors. Tonight's guest is Mike Lombardo. We'll get to him soon, but let's hit this round table style. My name is Brian Enright. You can follow me at The Horror Jew on Instagram and Twitter. We're here on Facebook at Brian Enright. Up next, we have Jared Letourneau. Jared, good evening. Good evening, Brian, and all the little boils and ghouls at home. Happy to be back on the interweb with you guys. Um, you can follow me on Facebook at Jared Letourneau or on the Twatverse Zombie with no E underscore Survivor. Back to you. All right. So if everyone can deal with me right now, I'm having some audio Technical issues. Technical difficulties? Yeah. We're oh, staying no. back. What's that? First day back. <laughs> First day back. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got here. Lots of fun stuff. I'll, I'll wait to introduce myself. <laughs> okay. Doesn't matter. My camera sucks. Right, I'm Razor. Are we having audio issues? <laughs> we are. Are we just having Ray issues? No, we're having audio issues. I could be heard. Are the people on Facebook not hearing us? No, no one on Facebook is able to hear us. We are. No, so they heard the videos, but they can't hear us. Yes. Window capture. This is the fun stuff about technology, kids. Yes, it is. And those of you that can hear us on YouTube... I can hear him on my phone. You can hear me? I can Here hear we it. go. There's a delay, but I can hear it. All right. So now that is fixed, guys, <laughs> let's introduce ourselves again. All right. So next up is Jared Legerno. Jared, good evening. <laughs> Hey, Brian. Jared here. You guys can follow me on Facebook at Jared Letourneau, or if you guys like 
Twitter more. Uh, I have a few followers there as well. Zombie yeah. underscore survivor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Jared. Up next is our president, Ray Zor. Ray, good evening. Hi, everyone. You can follow me at Razor underscore 433 on Twitter if you want. Or you can go to Apogee Comics and follow the comic book stuff. Let's get moving. <laughs> Let's keep moving. To the end. And uh, thanks, uh, thank you for our special guest tonight. Here he is, director of I'm Dreaming of a White Doomsday, Mike Lombardo. Mike, good evening. Howdy, folks. It's good to be back on uh, Spankwire Cam again. Uh, this is my first appearance <laughs> in a month, so I'm very excited. So you can follow me there. Or you can go on uh, Facebook, Mike Lombardo, if you want to stalk me personally, or uh, Facebook.com slash Real Splatter. Um, on Twitter, every once in a great while, you might be able to catch me, and that's uh, at Real Splatter. So check me out on all those. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mike Lombardo. So, uh, yeah, let's see if you're able to hear me or not. Um, no, not yet. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Mike Lombardo. There we go. Okay, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You have to bear with us, people. This is our first time back. We haven't been back in a while. Um, I was a lot more proficient at this than I am now. And then I updated my windows and blah, blah, blah. And there's a little echo in my voice, but not my life. Okay, so um, let's talk about it. We got we got, uh, we got got our guest, Mike Lombardo, on here. And uh, everyone here except me, I believe, has seen the new Hellraiser Judgment movie. Uh, you know, it's the, uh, the next edition to... The Hellraiser series, a little creepy film. I have yet to see not it. Doug Bradley. That's not that, Doug doesn't, that doesn't matter. <laughs> I love Doug Bradley, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, he's in the movie for like two minutes. I uh, not real hard. I bought it. I blind bought it just to support Hellraiser. I don't know why I do these things, but me too, bro. Good solidarity. I have it playing right <laughs> I got now. Whole series back there. I've even got Revelation, Hellworld. Yep. I no just shame. That Why not? Just support the whole franchise. Maybe one day you'll make a Hellraiser. Um, I mean, I do have about fifteen unrelated scripts that I could shoehorn Pinhead into, like they have been. So. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, and I'm willing all, to all all ten, make Hellraiser a... Eleven. I mean, I think it's perfect. It really, <laughs> really fits. And have the girl from Stranger Things in it. Uh, yeah, you know, we're in the talks. We're in the talks. Um, Got to recast the rest of the Santa Bites first, though. I will lose weight if you want me to play Pinhead. I already got the bald head going, but we don't need a bald cap. Next will be so, I, guess, I guess technically, for anyone out there that doesn't know, I uh, do a webcomic with Chris Enterline called Senobun, which yeah. uh, is about Pinhead working at the mall after he gets recast for the remake, which this is pre that actually happening. So... <laughs> um, I still stand that Cenobun is more canon than the actual Hellraiser films are. So you guys should check that out. Um, it's fun. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Yep. And for those of you out there, uh, Ceno, C-E-N-O-B-U-N. There's a Facebook page for it. It's really pretty funny, guys. I'm going to uh, put it up on the, our Facebook uh, in the yeah. chat. Clever so. shit. We actually went on a, the Seno Bond. He's a very uh, good artist. Taste our pleasures tour. So we started driving like when we were going to film festivals and conventions. We had eleven by seventeen printouts, and we stopped at Cinnabons in every state and handed them, like signed them, and gave them to the employees, and took pictures. Nice. So I, I oh, figured I it, from it, it was our uh, cease and desist tour. You know, <laughs> see if Ceno or Cinnabon would actually get pissed off and say. Something. <laughs> so far, they have not, which was awfully sweet of them. But, I wonder how many of the how many of the workers there are like, what the fuck? Yeah, well, they, a couple of them were like, they're freaking out because they're actually Hellraiser fans, and uh, that's oh, cool. I guess the people that don't know the the comic is all the dialogue from the Cenobites is exactly as it is in the movie. It's just repurposed to be talking about Cenobin roles. So it's like you know, this woman tries to return. A box of them, and he says, "She's like, I want to return these cinder rolls." And he goes, "You opened the box." <laughs> so, some of the people that worked at Cinnabon were getting really excited because they actually like Hellraiser, and other ones were like, "We're famous, we're famous," and I'm like, eh, "I guess." <laughs> I'm, 
But uh, so it's been an interesting, an interesting reaction uh, from them. We get a lot of side eye from those people too. I don't think they appreciate it. Mike, you got some fans um, watching with the horror syndicate right now. Uh, we oh, have a Jeff Formaldehyde says, "Hey, Mike." Ah, Jeff Fromis. He's the director of Romeo's Distress. He's an awesome director. I met him at a Nightmare Film Fest. We guys should check out his stuff. It's very, very cool. He's cute as a button, too. Really. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, Unless he doesn't... Have... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't remember if he has facial hair or not. I mainly saw him from behind, you know. Because we were in line. <laughs> in line for the, for the, you know, at the festival and, and whatnot. Um, anywho. <laughs> you, you have a Sarah Lane. Mike! Oh. Smiley face. Sarah is an awesome uh, old, old Facebook pal of mine. She is very, very cool. She's a big Hellraiser fan, too, which is always appreciated. You have a uh, Alfred J. Dill. Oh, another another local hero here in uh, Lancaster. Alfred, Al is a very cool dude. I met him through my buddy Julius back at Home Depot. Well, he thinks you're brilliant. He says Mike is brilliant. Oh, and, tell uh, him the check is in the mail. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, best ever, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and then we got a couple shout outs from uh from one of our horror syndicate writers, Chuck Ransford, who says you can make any film a Hellraiser film. You just have to splice random pithead scenes into it. Absolutely. That's a man who knows his Hellraiser mythos. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, think it's, I really think it's fascinating that they started that series. Like Clive Barker really went mm -hmm. out of his way never to actually talk about like a Judeo-Christian heaven and hell scenario. Like hell is really just the weird BDSM like world you go into if you're into that kind of shit. And then like as soon as the sequel started, like after like Inferno One, it's like a good versus evil like judgment sort of deal and it has nothing to do with the mythos at all like i don't know this, this always bugged me about those movies but you know which is exactly what judgment is yeah exactly <laughs> literally yeah i mean it's literally. Really yeah. Much. I mean, it's literally that and it's a shame because i think that as it on its own merits like if they would have taken the pinhead stuff out it actually would have been a decent i mean it was still a little light on story and stuff but the twist was kind of dumb but I mean, it's a decent movie. It's really gross. Like, I'm a big D Gary Tonicliffe fan. I like his makeup, and I think he's a decent director. Like, I wish it would have been the movie he was trying to make like five years ago, before it became Hellraiser. Yeah the uh, uh, the whole trial scene with the auditor and the assessor and the tr oh. and the I thought that was the stuff was actually great. Oh, and it was fucking fantastic. I feel like that. Uh, not auditor. Is that uh, is that what he is? The auditor, the, the auditor. Um, That's actually Tunnicliffe, isn't it? Uh, Tunnicliffe played the auditor, I believe. Yeah. I, I when I saw the uh, publicity stills of him, I, I didn't think I'd like the character, but I really enjoyed the character. Yeah, it was cool. They had like the freaky like typewriter thing, like sucking blood out of people and using it. That was it. Was a lot of really cool imagery. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. more saliva and bile than I was expecting too. Yeah, and a lot more eating of paper. Yeah, definitely. I like, I like bile. Maybe I'll like it. You'll enjoy it. I think you'll enjoy at least parts of it. Least parts I liked it. I mean, overall, it, I, I, you saw it before I did, Mike, and I read that you said it was better better than the previous three movies, which I agree with, but I actually think it may be even better than the previous four, maybe five, because there's like a thousand of them. Yeah, well, like, it, Hellraiser Inferno was actually a really good movie. Oh, yeah, no, it was. Like, the Doug Bradley stuff, I mean, the pinhead stuff they added wasn't bad, but it just didn't fit as no. well. But a cool movie on its own. The detective story and what was going on with him felt very Clive Barker-ish to me. But like then they like, Oliver Illusions esque Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then they added a pinhead into it, and they really didn't need to. And that's kind of how this movie, this movie kind of reminds me. I say this movie because I'm watching Judgment. I mean, Judgment kind of reminds me of it has the same vibe to me as Inferno does. Yeah, absolutely. And it is. It literally was an unrelated project that he was trying to kickstart a few years ago, didn't get the money. So you throw Hellraiser in a title and then people will buy it because it's part of a franchise. Yeah, and that, that act, that's something. Cloverfield, too. That's the same deal with the two sequels of Cloverfield with completely unrelated movies that they just right. rewrote the script a little bit and made it a loosely connected franchise. Which I still need to see the newest one that's on Netflix. It's pretty good. Yeah. I like this. I don't know. 
how anybody else felt about it. I heard a lot of mixed things about it. I really liked 10 Cloverfield Lane. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. John so the Goodman movie, was really good in that movie. Oh, my God. He's so terrifying in that movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've never seen him terrifying. I grew up watching him on Roseanne. Yeah, and no. He's, same way. he's always like a lovable character except for Walter Soljak, but, <laughs> you know, even he was lovable. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> I mean, it was – uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it made me nervous to eat pasta. If like I've ever met him, I always had this fantasy that we like sit down to a nice pasta dinner. But I'm like afraid of talking about his like marinara sauce being too bland now or something. He'll fucking shoot me. <laughs> After I saw Ten Cloverfield, I totally fucking ruined that that fantasy of mine. So you know, for what now he's and now he's coming back as Dan O'Connor. Not horror related. <laughs> you guys heard they're revamping Roseanne? Yeah, it comes back next. This. Oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that. And they're totally skipping over the fact that he died at the end of the original series. That's kind of become like a thing, like retconning stuff and ignoring sequels and all that. That's been pretty common. Yeah, so in the White Doomsday sequel, we'll see the little boy again, I'm guessing. Yeah, the Doomsday sequel. We're actually in the middle of remaking it, actually. I figured like, <laughs> like it's really six months to do a reboot, so I'm just going to do it now. Um, actually, we're in the box, like... This is a this is a horror syndicate exclusive right now. So we are in the talks with Mila Jovovich to play the character of Mom because I really felt that White Doomsday was lacking bullet time kung fu. So oh, yeah. that was the number one number one complaint we got about the movie. So we're going to completely change that. Um, really focus on the action. Um, the character of the little boy actually is now like a seventeen year old like karate champion who was in, in the middle of the world yeah. ended. So he teams up with her, and they Cobra kick Kai. Apocalypse. That's so, awesome. There's what some cool role game. Game. Was Brian's favorite actress. Well, yeah. Mike, aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> isn't that your Hellraiser plot right there? Well, I mean, I didn't want to spoil that, but that's uh, out of the bag. Yes, that is the plot of the new Hellraiser film that we are also writing. Um, I'm dreaming of Hellraiser well, Bond movie. But, you know, it was just I felt like it would be really shitty to recast the recast like i don't want to recast doug bradley again because i feel like that's just salt in the wound at that point so we're just going to continue on with the comic series instead and let the viewers use the cinema of the mind to see what the center bond movie would be like well hey what did you think of paul t taylor as pinhead in his brief appearance um <laughs> so that's interesting because i feel like like from a facial structure his jaw and his face is a little too wide um I mean, I'm comparing him to Doug Bradley because, of course, I'm going to. But his actual performance wasn't bad. Like he was, he was solid. I mean, they didn't really give him much to work with, and the makeup was decent. But I really don't like that he basically sits in like a fucking like Rob Zombie music video throne, like chair, like pointing at a wall, yeah. and he's like chilling out in the basement of this house. They're just like, "Hey, Pinhead!" He just like turns around like he's in like the fucking Apprentice or something. He's like, "Yes." <laughs> I was like, "What?" Are you doing he's all suddenly like. Did I hear my name? <laughs> yeah, it's, Wait, it's just like, you guys have another reboot? Like, what's there another sequel? Well, you need me? For I fun, mean, like, is, that, is that it? Would the, now, that house, was that the Cotton House? I was, think it was supposed to be. Like, yeah. It came yeah, 55 Ludovico Street, but it yeah. didn't look like it. No, of course not. Yeah, it's again, it's like, I'm not going to split hairs with it, obviously. Like, I appreciate that they tried, but, you know. Putting, you know, throwing a GPS address and like a puzzle box in the background, a Hellraiser film does not make. So, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. So, so the new Hellraiser movie. Um, Pit, so, Pinhead's it more in the trailer than he is in the actual movie? That's I probably think... every scene in the trailer. I mean, I didn't even see the trailer. It's probably every scene he's in the movie is probably yeah. in the trailer. That's, a, that's pretty cool. I mean, the, the, there's a scene with at the end of the movie. With uh, the the angel, mm -hmm. spoiler, and and that oh, looked, yeah. Well, I guess made it that far in on that. Uh, yeah. yeah. That, that ending. Um, it reminded me of one of the Wishmaster directed video sequels, actually. Mm. Wishmaster. They need to start shoehorning Wishmaster into movies. Yeah, I'm surprised they have. Well, there, dude, there'll be no sequels like with the the guardian angel coming down or whatever randomly in like the fourth or fifth one. Like, it's a shame because the original Wishmaster is a great movie. Like when Vestron oh, yeah. put 
Ray set. I'm like, if this only had Wishmaster one, I'd pay forty bucks for it. But I won't pay forty bucks to have all four of them. I don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> you like the one? What's that? You didn't like the second one? I mean, it wasn't as bad as the third and fourth, but it wasn't. It oh, wasn't. Man. Like the first one was like batshit nuts. I feel like the first one's a really underrated movie. Yes, I agree. I very, too. very good kills in that fucking movie. Oh my yeah. God, like, yeah. out? Holy shit. That was like the third best skeleton coming out of a person's skin during like a Perusian party I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know the other ones. Uh, and Schindler's List. <laughs> <laughs> the director's cut, of course. So we, so we got more comments uh, here. The, the on, unrated uh, version. <laughs> we got more comments here on Facebook land. Um, we have Sarah Lane. She can't wait to actually meet you, Mr. Lombardo, and turn you into a cotton candy cocoon. Mm. Uh, so get ready to do that. That's I guess that's a killer clown <laughs> reference. A common fan thing. Like people, you know, they always have this thing about me and cotton candy. It's, you know. <laughs> we got a. Uh, we got. Sounds kind of uh, kinky. <laughs> we got Chris Enterline. Uh, so Cinnabon is great, right? Right. With Absolutely. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> and uh, I like you. I've talked to him a little bit. He's a cool guy. Now Chris is Chris is a nerd. He's very cool. He's an amazing <laughs> artist. No, <laughs> like, he really does. He's got this musk about him. Not overpowering, but it's like <laughs> chanting, <laughs> enchanting. Actually, I've, I've talked to him about doing a, an artist spotlight for the Horror Syndicate, showing some artwork off on the page. Oh, that'd be uh, cool. Yeah, he's got a lot of cool stuff, including uh, the, the piece he did for you, which is pretty awesome. Oh, the uh, with the Resident Evil one or the... Yeah, the well, yeah, the Resident, Resident Evil one. Yeah, that's yeah, what Resident I'm did for Lex, my girlfriend, for our anniversary. That was, like, fucking kick-ass. Yeah. I really like that I one. I was more excited oh. about it than she was. <laughs> Dude, that was really cool. That was that was uh that was Resident Evil, like the very first Resident Evil. She was uh Jill Valentine, right? Yeah, no, we we had Birkin in there too, um, and some zombies and a crow. Yeah, me and Lex were tag teaming you during the, the live stream of Resident Evil Three oh, in the I middle of it. Fighter, And there's like I'm like holding the phone up to my ear like this, like trying to hear, and she's doing it and all these people are staring at us. We just you they just hear Resident Evil Three and like us crossing and shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I still have to beat it. Uh, you caught me at the worst time because there was a there's this moment where you have to get all of the parts for the uh, trolley, and oh, then so uh, you know Mikhail is there, and then uh, Nemesis meets you, and you have to get past Nemesis, and then you fall into the worm pit, and you have to like press the buttons to release the ladder, and I died three times, and I watched all my viewers go from I think it was three, it was you and Lex, and maybe one other person. And then, uh, as I kept dying, I was like down to zero views, and I'm like, ah, fuck my life. I was, you like, know what's scared. funny? Like, God damn it! When you're, I can tell you, I'm getting frustrated. <laughs> Let me tell you though, Resident Evil Three is a fucking hard game. Like it's unfairly hard. The shit when you're in the streets, man. The, the like, I remember the, specifically the part when you have to go down in the restaurant into like the walk-in refrigerator that's like downstairs, and they fucking ambush you with hunters in like that tiny ass room. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> it was. Oh, it's just annoying. I mean, it's a good game. It's no Code Veronica, of course, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to say something, Ray. What's up? No, oh, I said, oh come on. He said Code Veronica. Code Veronica's good. I like Code Veronica. It gets a I, little. I, it goes off the rails. Anything pre to me. And, pre what? I I remember pre six because um, I like five and I like four. But uh, the uh, I remember buying Resident Evil Three and playing it within uh, like a twelve hour side. I didn't stop to do anything. I, I didn't stop playing that game. It was so great because I had beaten two, uh, both whatever they are, both scenarios uh, that day before that. Dude, mm -hmm. I played. I've probably beaten Resident Evil Two more times than any other game that I've ever played. I've beaten that game probably over a hundred times. Like that's a point where I'm like, I got two hours to kill before work. I'm gonna beat Resident Evil Two. What the hell? It's uh, you know, it's you know, it's really funny. Um, I was talking to uh, George Cameron Romero, George Romero's son, mm -hmm. and um, I was, you know, I told him one of the things I wanted to do when I became a filmmaker is I wanted to make a documentary on the lost Resident Evil movie that George Romero was supposed to direct. Oh, the, sc the screenplay got turned down. Uh, no one at Capcom liked it, and 
Um, you know, I'm waiting for him to give me the word, and uh, uh, there may be an exclusive horror syndicate interview about the failed Resident Evil movie that George Merritt was supposed to direct. Well, and uh, you, know, you know why Capcom turned it down, right? Capcom didn't like the script. That's all yeah, we know. He just re he just gave him Night of Living Dead script. They're like, hey, we've already done this movie. You can actually find the script. Um, it's public, it's public domain. Um, you can find it on the internet. Yeah, they have and readings of it on YouTube. You can watch. He just gave him Night of Living Dead script. They're like, hey, we already done this movie. Whoa. You can find the script. Um, it's like, it's Someone's on Echo right now. Didn't he? Didn't he have um, Chris Redfield as Native American in his script? Chris Redfield was Native American. He was dating Jill Valentine. They were lovers. Um, but most of the script was hand in hand with the novel by S. D. Perry. Which is um, awesome. I yes. I'm so I'm so glad that you got to read those script. Yeah. There it is. Yep, there it is. Right here. I keep them handy just in case I'm on a live podcast. That's what's <laughs> awesome. Just for this fucking moment. Yeah, it's like when it comes to those in case of like SD Perry talk break glass, one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, and uh, that's all we know because George Romero directed a Biohazard Two commercial for Japan that oh, God, made, that made so an appearance. There, you, you see the documentary on it? No, I didn't know there was one. There's it's, it's on YouTube. It's a, it's the documentary on the Resident Evil on the Biohazard Two. I should call it. Uh, commercial, which we only got here in uh, on American release, I think as a Christmas advertisement. Um, with Brad and, Renfro. Uh, with, with the late Brad Renfro, yeah, he was uh, Leon Kennedy, which, you know, nowadays, that would have been crazy to see him as Leon Kennedy, because he looks nothing like Leon. It looked like he was like 15 years old when he was yeah. uh, Leon Kennedy in that trailer. And but, also, uh, minus the machismo, like... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of like mysterious like things that just kind of just went away. But the whole public knew about like Resident Evil 1.5, uh, which I know that there is um there it, it was hacked and uh, there's actually like a, a showcase you can actually play Resident Evil 1.5 on the internet now. Um, but it's not the full game, and uh, I think like the other girl's name was Eliza or something like that. But anyway, yeah, uh, like, like, monsters or whatever Lex was telling me about that. Uh, where it's like it goes back to the mansion after it's blown up, and there's like, that's that the one you guys are talking about, or is there is this a different one? You, know, you go to the RPD station, um, but it's uh, you go through, you fight zombies in jail cells. Um, there's like more monsters you fight. You get more weapons. Um, so it's the suffering. You. <laughs> that's a great game. That might be that might be next on the uh, surviving yeah. retro horror. But who knows? I I have the guy in the electric chair downstairs in my living room. I have that. I love it. So much. The second one kind of first one. We got um we got more comments here for you. We got uh director uh Tristan Clay says he's super excited to see your film, Mike. Oh, thank you. I hope that you get to see it uh, at the convention or film festival near you. <laughs> we got uh Frankie Carter. Yo guys, what up? I love Ray. So that's a special shout out to our president and fewer oh, Razor. Frankie, Frankie's the man who made the masks for the giveaway. Oh hell yeah, those were great. Beautiful. Which you have fucking now. <laughs> um, we have uh, Chris Enterline. Resident Evil Two is where it's at. Can you block him? Is that possible? Like, <laughs> I, just, it's, it, I mean, I've got a sandwich to go eat downstairs if this is going to be a thing. Like, I don't know why he thinks he can just fucking come on here and start talking to us. <laughs> he also I'm says gonna, he loves he those books. I did that black, so he wants to make sure that we know that he didn't do that drawing for you. Uh, we have, oh, we have Lex Quinn, uh, uh, Elisa Walker. It was the name of the girl in the failed uh, Resident Evil 2, which is Resident Evil 1.5. Elisa Thank you Walker. Very much. Elisa Walker. Yeah, Elisa. Elisa. One of those she names. She must have that someone was talking about Resident Evil, so she logged on here. So oh, if yes. you ever want to always talk about Resident Evil, she'll pop right back, right back on. <laughs> Love you, and honey. Then, I was talking to you, Jared. Resident Evil Dash was the plant overrun mansion. All right. That's and, right. That's right. And Chris Enterline says, I do what I want in all caps. 
I mean, you know, I'm I'm okay with it now. It's fun. <laughs> I'm gonna refresh my page. You guys are cutting out. I'll be right back. Yeah, just lean All into right. it. Lean into it. And rock with it. All right. So then there were three. No, I'm That's kidding. Demons poster, Brian. By the way, I love that movie. A uh, what? Demons? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's my favorite '80s movie of all time. Yeah, it's so my good. Favorite Argentinto film. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite Argento film? Dario That's Argentino. <laughs> Isn't that a brand of frozen pizza? <laughs> I don't know. That could be. That, that would actually be a decent name for a frozen pizza. It's a brand of cheese, isn't it? Well, yeah. You know, you know what? No, no, no. Are you talking about Argento? Oh, that's the dude that directed, uh, he directed Dracula with Keanu Reeves, right? <laughs> yeah, and Gary Coleman, yeah, who played Dracula. Yeah, that's good. I actually went to, on a serious note, I actually went to his Lucy? home, uh, Profundo Rosso. They had props from Demons in like the dungeon. It was really cool. I mean, they're all like disintegrating now, but that was really neat. I'm a big fan of that uh, that movie. It's so good. It always made me want to crash a helicopter into a movie theater. I don't know if you ever it played. Be done. I don't know if you ever played Silent Hill for the PlayStation. Um, but there's oh. um, there's Metropole posters all over. Uh, they're like they're oh, like yeah? all over the walls. That's awesome. Yeah, Silent Hill is is like god tier game. Silent Hill Two. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> we have a couple more comments um, Lex Quinn says yep as in response <laughs> to what we've said before uh, Damien Maffey uh, wants, to know if, Maffei Maffei? wants to know if Mike is single um, and, well, for, but, a, for the star of the stranger's prey at night I can be <laughs> but the um, uh, but your girlfriend has quickly replied he's taken <laughs> <laughs> But Mike is still looking for a free ticket, so yeah. Well, it is a, so the Strangers Prey Night actually opens on my birthday on March 9th. so boom, I, Bur birthday. I better get birthday a free present. <laughs> I better get a free ticket. <laughs> but yeah, for those who don't know, Damian Maffei not only plays uh, the man in the sack in uh, the Strangers, uh, he also plays the dad in I'm Dreaming for White Doomsday. So nice. very. And again, I'm not going to say that he got the role in the Strangers because of White Doomsday, but I mean, you do the math. Um, it's just it's a, it's a small jump from from real splatter to like major studio horror so you know i'd buy that for a buck <laughs> buy that for a dollar <laughs> um I, I i know it's kind of sidetracked um but uh they announced that they're going to be doing the reboot or not a reboot a continuation to the original robocop from 1987 wait was it paul uh, verhoven is it yeah someone else? they're gonna they're gonna do a direct sequel to the original 1987 uh, Paul Verhoeven's RoboCop. So hmm. anyone wants to know why they're rebooting RoboCop 2, it, it really confuses me. I don't know why they would want to. So they're going to skip over the RoboCop they already remade. Yeah. Are they the like red again, like they're doing with like the Halloween thing and all that shit? Or is it like yeah. they're, ignoring the, they're ignoring the other sequels? Mm-hmm. Well, Pretty the much. Show. They shouldn't ignore the one with Tom Noonan. Oh, man. Tom Noonan is awesome. That was the um. I think those were Frank Miller ones, right? Those were Frank Miller RoboCops. Yeah, he wrote the second and third one. Yeah, he was actually in one of them too. He was killed yeah. by Tom Noonan. Yes, in uh, I, I'm a big RoboCop fan. So. Oh God, who, dude? I I would be very upset with you if you weren't a RoboCop fan. Dude. RoboCop I is amazing. Dude, Paul Verhoeven is amazing. Starship Troopers. Mm-hmm. That's Strip like. I forgot he made that. <laughs> was that like, was was striptease or showgirls that was the first NC seventeen movie? Oh fuck, you're right, you're right. It was showgirls. He made showgirls. Showgirls? Right. Okay, I can't remember. It was I, I remember I saw I saw parts of that movie when I was like thirteen. I, <laughs> I don't remember the rest of it. I put that out there with species. Yeah. Uh, uh, I knew Agent Dale Cooper was in it. Um not as Agent Dale Cooper. But that movie was confusing as a child. Um, yeah, my favorite, th my three favorite sci-fi movies. What was that? It's a Twin Peaks firewalk movie. Yeah, that movie's confusing. I love that movie. But <laughs> that my favorite, awesome. my, <laughs> my three favorite sci-fi movies are uh, RoboCop, 
Total Recall, and Starship Troopers. So that really says a lot. It's a pretty good. It's a pretty good list. Now, do you consider well, do you consider Aliens that franchise be sci-fi or horror? Both. Yeah, I'd say both. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely in the camp of like both. I think uh, the first movie is, is 100% horror. I actually think the third movie is horror too. Yeah, uh, I can see that. There's very little future or anything in there. Yeah. Well, the second one I I think is uh is a action sci-fi kind of horror. It's not too scary, but you know. What do I yeah, know? I mean, it's, it's a big action-oriented creature movie. Uh, I mean, for my money, I think Aliens is one of the greatest movies ever made. But uh, Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Predator's on that list for me where it's kind of sci-fi and horror. A lot of people just think it's a straight-up action sci-fi, but when you think about it, it plays out like a fucking slasher film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, the original Predator, I'd definitely say more horror action than anything, but then Predator 2 gets into a little bit more sci-fi-esque stuff, but I mean, I think it's still pretty firmly grounded in horror. You guys ever play, speaking of video games, uh, you guys ever play Predator Concrete Jungle for PS2? Yes. Oh, oh, fucking awesome. <laughs> that was a, you could skin people, that was like GTA, but with Predator, and you could skin people and like carry them up on top of buildings. Didn't matter how many times I watched that animation, just over and over and over again. Just do it. It's bad people. It never got old. <laughs> they, need, they need to update that game like they have with some of the older platforms onto like the PS3 and 4. They need to oh update God, it. Dude, I would love for them. Some of the suffering, if they did like an HD remaster that, they'd get my 30 bucks again. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's something they definitely need to remaster is the suffering because you can't play it anywhere else except for Xbox and uh, PS2. I have a PS2 Slim, but it's, you know, it's still a pain in the ass. Like playing on an HD TV, it looks like garbage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have a CRT to play old games on. Yeah, and uh, you know, one of my favorite games too was uh, was Carpenter's The Thing for PlayStation. Oh my god, yeah, stuff. very underrated game. Uh, <laughs> the controls were so hard to get used to, but when you finally did, <laughs> well, the mechanics of it were kind of fucky too. Like the blood test mechanic never quite worked. <laughs> but, I mean, it was cool. Like that game was hard. That game was fucking impossible. I remember when I beat that, I like, well, actually, so the blue bottom disc thing on that really pissed me off, too, or it wouldn't play in a lot of the PlayStations. You had to, like, flip it upside down or put tape on the disc. But I bought another PlayStation just to play it. <laughs> I had to get, like, a newer one. So, actually, I just tried to replay that recently, and I was like, fuck this game. I can't do it. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's too aggravating for me right now. I don't have that kind of patience anymore. I'm, th- I'm going to be 31 in, like, two weeks. I got a foot in the grave, you know? Like, I can't be spending my time playing licensed tie-ins to John Carpenter movies anymore. Come on. <laughs> so you won't be buying the Christine uh, adaptation? Comp- <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a GTA expansion, right? Uh, yeah, and, and the Village of the Damned that's coming. <laughs> I, You know, when I saw that pre-order, I just kept thinking of a brick wall so I wouldn't pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> There's like one person look at that joke. <laughs> Sorry, I that's keep right. thinking about sat in that whole movie. <laughs> I love Christopher Reeves in that movie. Oh god, I haven't seen him so long. I, that was his last movie before the accident, I think. Yeah, it was. It's been over a decade since I've seen that movie. It's funny. Uh, the other the Best Buy's having a Screen Factory sale, and mm-hmm. that was on sale for fifteen dollars, and I still didn't buy it. <laughs> Wise man. <laughs> I remember watching it when it came out. I was like, "Ooh!" And Mark Hamill's in it. <laughs> For my, for my money, I'll stick to body bags, but I want some Mark Hamill, John Carpenter action. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just body morph them together like I do in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I started watching the movie and being like, uh, oh man, I just hope Kiersey Alley just kills herself in front of these kids. <laughs> like That's what I wish for the entire movie. And in I got real life or in the movie? <laughs> Hey man, I mean, it was it was bad. I was that bad. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. I'm still looking forward to the official um the the final sequel. Uh, look who's talking again for the last time. Or <laughs> it, dude, the scene in Look Who's Talking, I think it was two with the toilet with the fangs. That where it's like I need pee-pee. That scared the shit out of me. It's the fucking the Ghostbuster, the real Ghostbusters cartoon show toys. They had the toilet with the mouth, and that—that's what I always thought of, and it scared the hell out of me. Give me pee pee. 
I still don't use the toilet. I'm still terrified. I use potted plants mostly. <laughs> Hashtag Harvey Weinstein. Oh. <laughs> Why is he potted plant? <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that wasn't that uh, Louis C.K. with the potted plant? I still don't use the toilet. I'm still terrified. I use potted plants mostly. What? <laughs> no, that's not... yeah. it's a, delayed, a delayed echo. Here. Oh boy, <laughs> it's okay. Technical difficulties, everybody. But hey, that's what makes going live great. At least yeah, I'm not echoing anymore. We're off the rails on THS Lives tonight, kids. Well, we don't have a structure like we used to have, so it's okay to go off the rails. Yeah. So, Mike, you have a your white. I'm dreaming of white doomsday premiering again at the New Jersey Horror Con. Is that correct? Uh, that is. I'm excited for people, for new people who have not seen it, and for people that have seen it to re-experience it again for the first time. Are you going out there? First time. I am. I'm going to be there. Hopefully, Saturday and Sunday. We're playing Sunday at 10:45. Oh, well, 10:46 a.m. Um, <laughs> So hopefully I see you guys there. That'd be cool shit. I know that there's a few in that in that area. Brian, hopefully you'll be going. I yeah, yeah. we'll be there. Excellent, excellent. I expect to see you in that theater. Is that I that's in Cherry will. Hill, right? That's uh, Edison. Edison. It was in Cherry Hill last year, I guess. Cherry are Hill you, are you, is, I think, isn't it? So are you going to get into uh, like uh, Days of the Dead and in Indie this year, or Horror Hound? No. Oh. Okay, so I'm not sure entirely if I'm allowed to say this, but I'm just going to say it anyway. I apologize. I wasn't supposed to. We're playing all five Days of the Deads, I think. Don't quote me on that. We played in Atlanta already, and I believe I, – I, I don't know if I'm supposed to wait until they each get announced, the festival thing, but I'm pretty sure we're playing it, all of them. And, if again, if I wasn't supposed to say that, I apologize. Seriously, I did not want to do that. But it's, They're not going to walk. <laughs> but uh yeah well so we should be playing it at those i don't know if i'm gonna be at any of those uh because i've already done a lot of trips this year and i've got some more planned and it's very expensive to get a hotel and yeah. to do all that um for every single one of those but if you guys end up in the area of days of the dead please come check out the movie i would appreciate I, i'll it. be there in june i'll be at the days of the dead in indianapolis in june excellent you can be my man you can tell me how the screening went Give me all the dirt. <laughs> Reporter on the scene. I yeah, you fire at the phone. cell phone. I'm going to go dress up as Santa. <laughs> we'll be at the Jersey Con dressed as Santa, actually. We're going to in Philadelphia on South Street dressed as uh, with gas mask Santa in the middle of the snowstorms. That was pretty funny. I don't think South Street appreciated it, though. They just kind of gave it some weird looks and avoided us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, South Street is garbage. Yeah, it used to be a lot cooler, but it's it's not. I mean, South Street Cinema, where we played, is awesome. It's run by the guys that do um, the Philadelphia Unnamed Film Festival, which I highly recommend. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a cool screening, but I was really hoping to get some more like fun crowd reaction outside, and it just was not happening. <laughs> you know what's you know what's funny? I live about 15, 20 minutes away from where you uh, performed in South Philly. I should have been there. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Say, I wasn't gonna guilt you on the air, but now, yeah, you put yourself out there. Yes, yes. I'm so sorry. No, I saw it, and I'm like, oh shit, that's South Street. I thought, you know, why would I think another South Street? But I fucked up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have been there. All right. Hey, you know what? I'm trying not. I'm really trying that hard not to judge you right now. But we'll go next week. <laughs> no, if you're there yeah. next week, that'll make up for it. That'll atone for your sins. Yeah, no, I got my press pass. Um, just me with my press pass. Uh, press. Only one. Yep, I got my press pass. I'm gonna wear my uh, Dario Argentino shirt. Excellent. <laughs> so there's a couple other flicks that are uh, showing that weekend. Also, James Quinn's Flesh of the Void. Oh, yeah. I did yes. a review for that on the Syndicate. That movie is a fucking trip. Oh, yeah. That was a lot of fun to see at Nightmares. I don't think the crowd quite knew what to expect. <laughs> uh, it was, that was a good time. And I noticed on, on the list, on the billboard poster with the list of movies, you were right next to John Russo's film. Uh, yeah, my uncle is John is a zombie. I'm excited to see that. Um, yep. I didn't know he was still in the film game. So that's yeah. 
exciting. That's at three o'clock on Sunday, I think. And then, uh, oh, Three Dead Trick or Treaters is playing. That's another one we uh, from Nightmares. I actually did not get to see. And also, Lucas Hassel has a movie, um, The Son of the Father, playing. I think on Friday. I missed that at Nightmares too, but I hear that's like amazing. So I'm very excited to. It's just cool to see like. When you're on the fest circuit, you start to see the same movies pop up over and over, and it's cool as you get to meet the people that made them, and they're all really awesome. So I'm excited to be playing with them again. It's kind of a, a an honor to be uh, out there. I don't know if they feel the same way about me. They're like, God, we're slumming it with Lombardi again. <laughs> that fucker's going to kill the crowd. No one's going to be having a good time anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to watch this movie and walk out depressed. <laughs> But hey, but when, I'm depressed, when I'm depressed, I buy stuff, so I walk right to the dealer's room and just pick up like a whole shitload of stuff. I might <laughs> just walk out of the theater with a full heart on. I mean, that's just how <laughs> I am. <laughs> it's, it ain't one of them kind of flicks. It's, it's species four. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, could, they could be. I just put Natasha Henstridge at the end somewhere. I could make it to a species movie. If we go by hell <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh let's hit up some comments. Um, where do we go last last off? Uh, okay, so we got uh someone mentioned Cannibal Farm. Uh, seen it? Cannibal uh, Farm. Oh yeah, Frankie Carter, uh, the Mask Man. Did you see Cannibal Farm? Seen it? Uh David Jeffrey, Cannibal Farm trailer looked like a chainsaw ripoff, so I skipped it. Uh, Randy <laughs> Rump, Randy Rock said mine. Uh, Chris Centerline says, Damien, I saw your poster face at the local theater. Congrats on that, sir. And uh, Frank said, trailer's all you need to watch. One below. I don't know, have you guys heard of Cannibal Farm? I have not. Is that playing at the Jersey? Somebody show? recut it as a Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, Leatherface trailer. So, it, yeah. It can't be worse than the Leatherface movie that just came out. So no, <laughs> That movie was just stupid. That's all yeah, I can say. That, that, that pissed me off. Like Even in the convoluted, like, non-continuity that series has, that one was bad. Yeah. It, yeah. It, I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't hate it, but as a Texas Chainsaw Massacre installment, it wasn't that. It didn't yeah, it feel just, like it didn't that. I mean, I love it. was beautifully shot and stuff. Like, it was really, I mean, it was, it was well made, but it just, I mean, and you can tell that obviously someone stepped in and fucked with that script because it was all over the place. Like, it didn't know what it wanted to be. It felt like Natural Born Killers. Yeah. Then it, like, like a fucking torture porn movie randomly and like all this shit. I was like, what is this? <laughs> it's hard to get into. Also, they have the fucking opening credits when the guy's got a chainsaw on his face. They're like, about, like they have the chainsaw like right next to his nose and then like credits are rolling on the side. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, why am I reading about like the production designer when this guy's about to get a chainsaw through the head? Like, come on. Right. That... Infuriate. Pick and, pick and choose what we should look at here. Yeah, the necrophilia scene was fucking awesome, though. That was cool. I mean, the good news is Leatherface from 1990 came out on Blu-ray last week, so you can get that to cleanse your palate. It doesn't have any fucking ex new extras on it, though. It's, it looks good, and it's a good movie. It doesn't need extras. Actually, oh, it needs extras. I, I like the movie. I do. I would buy it, but I want more extras. I want to see more about the production. Like, it's interesting. Yeah. Well, that's when somebody like Arrow or Screen Factory has to get involved because they pack their shit with extras, you know. Well, like, yeah, that's what I was hoping for when I heard it was gonna be blue, but then it's it's just like their archive collection that they shit out because they know they're like, yeah, we'll appease the fans once a year. What the hell? Yeah, the uh, and the collectors will buy it just because it's the new yeah, another the Phase Three kind of thing. Yeah, I hate that. <laughs> Love that movie though. Yeah, actually, Jeff Burr will be at Jersey Con. I'm really excited to meet him. His uh, commentary track on Pumpkinhead 2 is one of the best I've ever heard because he just kind of talks about what it's like to be a working director and just have to take, you know, to be hired on a movie a day before production, like, like six days before the production started and stuff. It's just really, really interesting. I like his attitude about stuff a lot. He's a cool guy. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Do we need a commercial? No, I'm kidding. Um, I, need a commercial break. I am so sorry. <laughs> uh, let's go back to the comments. Uh, hi, everybody. What, what just happened? Did, did the conversation just drop? 
Wait, what's going on? The, are we having tech problems or is this entertainment problems? I this is entertainment play. problems. All right, so uh, let's go back. Oh, we got some comments. I'd love to see Jeff Garland as RoboCop from uh, Damien. Uh, get to the chopper from Megan. You're injured. <laughs> Random guy. Predator reference. Gotta love it. Uh Chuck Ransford. I just realized Mike is from Lancaster. That's where I live. Chuck Ransford is one of our writers for the Horror Syndicate. Giving a big shout out to you. Oh, fuck it, hey, tell him we should meet up sometime. Absolutely. He's a good kid. He joined us just this year. He's been cranking out articles pretty pretty, pretty quickly. Like He's cranked out a bunch of articles just this he year just alone. He just sent me a message before the show saying he had one ready to go, so I'm going to schedule for tomorrow. Nice. <laughs> I, uh, I I pretty much uh, raised him to be the horror fan that he is, so I take full <laughs> credit for him. He's taking um, credit, but you know he's he's ventured off and discovered a lot more, uh, you know, films than I have um, in the past. He 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 likes a lot of the August Underground movies. Okay, I've got no yeah. tag. That's a Pittsburgh. So I, I haven't seen those yet, um, but he highly recommends them to me since I was a fan of, uh, you know, the original Human Guinea Pig movies, which uh, one day hopefully we'll get to watch on VHS at night. Guinea Pig movies oh, are interesting. Man. Mermaid in a Manhole and He Never Dies are the best. There you go. Yeah. We would get shut off in 10 minutes playing those movies. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, we had we, we did really <laughs> successful playing um, – Blood sucking freaks, which uh, oh, man, the in its entirety. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, again, that's like that's like second best human ass dartboard scene I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm, afraid ask, I'm afraid to ask which one is the first, Mike. Well, Sister Act Two, Back in the Habit, of course. Yes, Woo! yes, yes. It's the best scene of the week over. <laughs> oh man. I, uh, you know what? I I must admit I've never seen Sister Act two in its entirety because Sister Act one was so good. Um, I gotta I gotta go. Um, well, it's been fun, Brian. But uh, you get your three. Um, Thanks a lot, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Go to the video store and get a movie. Come on. You just pissed our oh fucking guest off, Brian. Why don't we just pause this conversation? And you go fucking not rent, but buy a copy of Sister Act two. <laughs> well, at this point. Screen. At this point, it's going to be it's going to be a double disc with the first sister act, and maybe the third movie they might throw in fucking Free Willy Four, uh, the the Last Cove or whatever it's fucking called, you know, singing whales, singing nuns. No fucking joke. My mom owns the box set of the fucking Free Willy movies. That's why I found out there's like four of them. And I was like, how many times can that fucking whale like get captured before people just stop trying to save it? Like did they did the they con, did they continuously have like Michael Jackson knockoff like theme songs? I'm not and sure. I've never watched them. I don't know. Probably. I would. I would okay. hope. All right, because I know that the first movie had Michael Jackson's um, uh, whatever. It wasn't We Are the World, but it was something to sound like it. Uh, I don't know. If those who are watching in Facebook land, uh, yeah, but no. Back Sister Act for seven fifty on DVD. <laughs> wow. Wait, is that the first or the second one? Both together. Both? The yeah, that's three twenty-five per movie. Brian, get on that shit. Brian, you can have a double feature. Yeah, holy hell! You're lucky enough, All Mike right. will sign it for you. I yeah, I'll even sign Sister Act Two. Or Sister Act Two. That's why I'm talking it up so much. Sister Act Two. That movie put me in so much rage when I watched it the first time. And it's because but the it first has a young, so hot good. Lauren Hill in it. I mean, they mess up the mythos of the sister act, you know, but <laughs> it's, you know, it's whatever. I mean, they, they retcon some stuff. You know, I, I forgive it. It was, it was the uh, Freddy's Revenge of Sister Act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. I agree. I, agree. I mean, and, and technically, technically, if you want to get if you want to get really into it, Sister Act 2 was the first one where Whoopi Goldberg is actually undead because in the beginning when it gets struck by lightning, she actually does come out of the grave, so... There you go. So that's the first, technically the first supernatural sister act. Thank God. I hope it ends with Tommy Jarvis uh, drowning her into a lake. Uh, that was a deleted scene, actually. That's on the Blu-ray. 
<laughs> where she gets sucked underground by Freddy Krueger. Whatever works, I don't care. So the, the Krueger's claw pulls the the nun habit down. And there, you go. Wow. there you go. You know what? There's been a lot of. Uh, I, I've noticed that there's been a lot of love coming out for um, Jason Goes to Hell, and I'm I'm so happy that this is happening in my That's life. A movie. Why would somebody? <laughs> Jason Goes to Hell is the best whole fucking series. I'm just gonna say, it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Next to so Jason X is the best. I love it so much. I have a, I have a soft spot for Jason X too. Oh, it's it's so good. Like what sequel? Jason, yeah, Jason. No, actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> that would be uh, that would be Jason X. Uh, the experiment was the official sequel. <laughs> this is another one of those books I have in my in case of Jason X talk break glass. Oh my um, god, you're, you're serious? This. There's four of them. Five of them. I'm sorry. They made actual sequels to Jason X. Uh, yeah, they're books, and there's also a comic books. series, Jason vs. Yeah. Jason. X. That's amazing. That would be a fight I would pay to see. Jason versus Jason X. The comic left a little to be desired, but it was entertaining. The the novels, I can in good conscience recommend them, but <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're pretty bad, uh, especially the one that's written like a bad cyberpunk novel. Oh, my God. It took me a year to fucking read it. A year. <laughs> but for my money, I'll go with... Uh, Friday the 13th, The Jason's Drain, which is probably the greatest novel ever written. Oh my it, god. It's, it's uh, imagine Battle Royale with prisoners. Throw Jason Voorhees in, and he's oozing a, like, he was part of an experiment where he's like oozing black sludge that makes everything he touches turn into a zombie on a tropical island. That's the Steven. premise. That sounds amazing. It's, so it's also like $400 right now on eBay if you can find it. But oh it's my god. So, <laughs> every penny. Every fucking penny. The only I'm one I've read of that series was The Church of Jason. Uh, the Church of the Divine Psychopath? Yeah, The, the Cult of one. Jason. Cult? Yeah, that was a cool one. <laughs> I remember reading that one years ago. Yeah, those were old books. There's, so there's a scene in Jason, the Jason strain. This is all I'm going to say. A surfer, this chick is surfing, and she goes under, she gets knocked under the water, and a great white shark is about to kill her. Someone appears out of the gloom of the ocean. Wearing a hockey mask and rips the lower jaw off of the shark, saving her. <laughs> she rushes to the, to the shore, and Jason emerges and she goes to hug him to thank him, and he slices her in half of the lower jaw of a great white shark. And it the like, is it, it sounds like something Lucio Fulucci would write. Yeah, oh, for Lucio. <laughs> pasta sauce company, right? That is a yes. That is another Italian franchise. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh my god, it's it's great. Uh, and I, I like to sprinkle uh sauve cheese on it. Oh, yeah. Sauve. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Mikole so, Sauve. So so these so these uh these Friday thirteenth novels, are they all in the uh Jason Goes to Hell universe? Um, I think that they may have bastardly just ignored that entry. Well I, no no, that's not true. That's not true. Okay, I'll tell you why. Because Hell Lake where Jason escapes from hell. So technically this is, I, I believe they might even mention it. This is a direct sequel to Jason goes to hell. Technically. Nice. Um, it also has like a uh, fucking Henry Lee Lucas, like a, a character who's kind of like him. Mm -hmm. uh, and Otis O'Toole. Like it's like a weird kind of combination of them. They're tooling around. So all these serial killers escape hell too. Pretty wild stuff. I gotta check it out. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm pretty well read. So you know, honestly, that scene you described with the shark, like Paramount could have made a movie that went with that. The movie that they ended up getting rid of, <laughs> I would have paid to see that. Oh my god, dude, it would be like the deep blue sea. Well, if they weren't making deep blue sea. fan art of that. Dude, I'm surprised uh, there's not more love for those books. I'm surprised there's no fan art. That would be like you know, where's Chris Centerline when we need him? We need some. He just went to bed. That's where he is. Yeah, we need we need some Jason Jason Shark uh, slicing. <laughs> Commission them. What's what's that guy's name? Creton. Creed. Uh, the uh, black guy from Jason Goes to Hell. Uh oh uh, uh oh my God. Creighton Duke. Creighton Duke. Duke. Yeah. Yeah, I was brain farting. Yeah. yeah I just I haven't had a taste of the Duke yet. <laughs> <laughs> They needed more of him in that movie. I think they could have sold the movie. 
just like that. Well, so people's bitch fest about that movie is that Jason's not in it very much. Like you see him in the, they do like the quantum leap mirror thing. I thought that was pretty cool. But like, who cares? Like that movie had so many wonderful, like outlandishly disgusting kills. Yes. And it tried to do something different. Like I don't need to see another clone of the Pride of the Thirteenth movie. I've seen it eight times already. Like, yeah. it's something a little bit different. Well, you know? there's a there's a trivia that um that actually the director just announced that um Jason Goes to Hell is its own movie and it's in the Evil Dead universe and uh, the the yeah. makers of Gun and Elphonic. Come on, cares. Guns and Elphonic, what they did was when you play as Jason Part 9, um, when he goes to a uh, uh, shift, that's why his shift is so powerful and like so fast and you can travel so far with it. Him? Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, well, okay, they... so if we go by Hellraiser logic, Jason Goes to Hell is absolutely an Evil Dead sequel because they had the Necronomicon in it in the background somewhere. Yes, they so, did. you know, it plays out of the puzzle box, it could be a Hellraiser sequel. Too. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it's in there, honestly. Uh, uh, yeah, they have the fucking Freddy been in a drawer. And uh, there's something else, isn't there? There's the Freddy glove, obviously, but I feel like there was a third... Isn't the dagger from Evil Dead as well that they use, or is that... Yeah. Am I mistaken? Is it that's the that's the one they use, isn't it? Yes. I can't remember. It's been a while. The I actually Dagger got, of Kandar. I got to see the original ending to that movie at Fangoria Weekend of Horrors like twenty years ago, but it didn't have mm. sound in it yet. And mm. oh my god, it was amazing because it's just production sound and just these big rubber hands grab at him and all this like goofy shit at the end it was great. There's the demon thing that, that crawls up the chick's vagina, that comes back, but it's like big and it's like going oh, at him. Yeah. It's on that. It's on the documentary. Oh, there's a, wait, there's a documentary. The Crystal Lake Memories one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it shows. Oh, it oh, oh, I, thought, I know there was like a, they were talking about when Jason goes to hell, like Doc, like they did with the uh, uh, the Return of the Living Dead and like Leviathan for Hellraiser and stuff. But I don't know if that actually. I thought that was out. I'd be excited about that. I want to see a whole section on the shaving scene. <laughs> <laughs> I get honestly probably the. F- Number one, Jason Voorhees shaving a nude man strapped to a table with leather bondage straps. I'd have to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to agree with you as much as I don't like that movie. I mean, it, it definitely probably is the best that you'll see of that. I mean, but dude, the usage of ultra slime in that movie when the sheriff, like when he body swaps out of the sheriff and he's like, his jaw comes off on the floor and he's like, he goes and like, oh, and then he smacks his head against the wall, yeah. so string out goop. <laughs> I mean, there's some great things that do happen in that movie, I'm not going to lie, but from a story standpoint, I think it's bad. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I, 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 I hear you. I understand why people don't like it, but like, I never really watched Friday the 13th for its rich plot. I mean... <laughs> Come on. Huh? That's, what, that's what it's all about, is the plot. Thought prov- thought-provoking storytelling. Well, okay, that's let me... What the whole thing. We may have talked about this before, but I'm not the only one in this group chat that uh, that tent scene has tracking errors on their VHS copy. From being around and paused, am I right? Eleven-year-old <laughs> Mike was a very big fan of that movie and that scene. <laughs> As an adult Mike, I cannot achieve climax unless my partner's split in half nice. with a fence post. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird, weird thing I have. You know, Lex hates it, but <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? What, what works you for you in half works, again? Um, sometimes ro- sometimes role-playing helps, even if it's literal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. you know, if your partner's not willing to be bisected, are they really, you know, are they really worth keeping around? No. Yeah. Did you flip your thing down and then reverse it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an actual signpost. I can't, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I mean, Jason Goes to Hell is probably one of my favorite in the series. Uh, I like it better than Jason X, even though people will fucking smite me for that. I mean, Jason X is an acquired taste. Like, you have to really be, like, a super intelligent, well-thought-out horror fan to really appreciate Jason X. So I understand, you know. <laughs> I'm, from the, I'm from the person who hasn't seen Sister Act 2. I'm not surprised. Let's just there say that. Go. See, there you go. To so appreciate the nuance of Jason X, you know. Oh man, but sister! No, I wish, I wish like, there was an actual Ethernet plug I could have pulled out in life when I watched Sister Act Two. <laughs> <laughs> Jason X still to this day has my favorite kill scene. Is it the cryo uh, head? 
Yeah, the head smash. Oh, yeah, not, man. That's not the a, uh, simulated I, sleeping bag death scene. That's that, so that was a great scene too. Yeah. <laughs> but that had been done, so it was like, yeah. You know, I saw that movie in a theater, a packed theater of three people, and I legitimately I mean, I'll admit this, I peed a little. I actually <laughs> I was laughing so hard during that movie. That was I saw three times in the theater. They had like the cheap theater here. It's like second run movies. They had it for like a week, and I just I made my dad go and see it. And he's like, "What the hell is this shit?" I'm like, I was like, "This is a Friday the Thirteenth movie, but I get to see it in the theater. It's kind of a Friday the Thirteenth movie." I mean, I but... <laughs> so, are they doing Jason X in the game or not? Is that actually happening? Yeah, he's in it now. Yeah, it's legit. Um, in the PC version, they released a mod. Like hackers released the mod and like um like Gun and Ilphonic like wrote out like this like patch update for this PC. They're like, if anyone's oh. using this mod, we are deleting your accounts forever. Are you and, serious? Yeah, you can you can find it on YouTube. People actually um use the Jason X uh mod, even though they um his uh stats aren't what Ilphonic and Gun are going to deliver later on. They're just kind of like uh, created by the mod. Um, they don't want you using it until it gets released. Yeah, you can yeah. find it on YouTube. People are... Yeah, that's so, fucking. I mean, dumb. It's crazy, but you know, you know what they could be doing with their time instead of banning people for playing a fan mod, they could be fixing all the fucking problems that game has, or getting their single yeah. player ready. Well, they're working on dedicated servers so people don't rage quit when they die. That that shit got old real quick. Yo. It's that's like my don't kill me on the host. What's up, Ray? Yeah, that was my favorite part of the game. <laughs> the rage quitting. Yeah, when the host would rage quit, I love that. Oh, uh, yeah, you don't get any fucking XP or anything. I got my dick hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah or when people just <laughs> bag like for twenty five minutes and you're Jason and you can't see them. It's like, wow, this is fun. I love that. But yeah, you know, the the best thing, the the most fun in that game is to go when it first came out. Um, Lex had got it. She was a Kickstarter backer, so I went in and uh, I started like when people were being idiots and they were pissing me off. I'd go on the headset and I'm like, I'd run into like a group of them. I'd be like, guys, Michael Myers is right behind me. Don't go to sleep. Don't go to sleep. <laughs> they were just like the fury. You could feel the heat coming off of the TV. It was just a <laughs> don't open the box. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so I heard Le Heather Langenkamp was in that movie, or, or she yeah, wasn't. she is for like a second. Oh, fuck, that's right, she was. Yeah, she has like some really janky prosthetics, and she's like in a scene. She plays the landlady or something like that. Yeah, she's like, I'll open the door. <laughs> there you go. That, that's another convention 8x10 you can have at your table. No raise your judgment. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I watched I watched a couple good uh, horror movies that I would definitely consider being like top for 2018. Uh, there's Mom and Dad with Nicolas Cage. Um, there is Mayhem with the guy who played Glenn from The Walking Dead, which is like, good. yeah, Mayhem was awesome. It was like uh, the Belko experiment, but on coke. And um, uh, what else was good? The Belko uh, experiment itself felt like it was on coke already. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. That made me actually feel really uncomfortable watching. <laughs> like, like everybody line up and they're just gonna like execute people. And I thought the movie was gonna be fun, and it wasn't fun at all. As I was not in the right mindset to sit through that. You thought it was gonna be like a little bit more tongue in cheek. Yeah, well, it's an office space meets battle royale, and I I pretty much had it pegged, and I'm like, oh, we start yeah. watching. This isn't fun at all. Like this is horrible. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I enjoyed it, but it was just you, it was super. Like You'll like Mayhem. Mayhem was actually really decent. Like, you're not bored at all. At Belko Experiment, you weren't bored either, but it was just like, it was a little more nerve-wracking. Um, probably my favorite horror movie of 2018 so far is My Friend Dahmer. If you guys have not had a chance to check that out, check it out immediately. I want to see that so bad. Huh. It's so good. It's it's ridiculously sexy. It's, it's as sexy as The Ritual, if you guys have not seen The Ritual yet on Netflix. Yeah, that's that good. Cool. That. So, like, on a scale from Jason Goes to Hell to Sister Act 2, like, where does it lie? <laughs> uh, where is that Ethernet cord? 
<laughs> um uh you know what um i will have to say that uh that um mom and dad ritual and my friend Dahmer are all tied for 2018 horror movies uh, yeah can't can't really can't really pick apart one yet nicholas cage um brings back his Classic Cage performance from Vampire's Kiss, Deadfall, and, <laughs> and, he, and it's like you know the beginning twenty minutes of Face Off. He brings back that that his pure, maniacal wide eyed. Oh my god! Vampire's and, Kiss uh, is special. Okay. Oh god! <laughs> and uh, Lance Henriksen is in it, and he is hilarious. And you don't ever hear me say that in a sentence. Um, but it was really good. Uh, it's just. It's fucking crazy. If you have kids, it's a little difficult to watch, but um, but it was really... It's not like The Witch or anything like that, where they mash a baby into a stew and rub it all over their bodies. <laughs> but, um, I, I, I see James in the comments said that I have a beautiful singing voice. Oh, yeah, was, uh, shit. He's, he's the guy from uh, that does those, the restorations for Vinegar Syndrome. Um, I met him at uh, Days of the Dead, and uh, he got to hear me serenade the crowds with um, "Crossroads" by Bone Thugs and Harmony with Jane, John Wayne Commonwell, and uh, David Barbie. So he was like, I'm pretty time. mad that I missed that. But it was pretty wonderful, depending on what side of the table you were on. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I just missed my uncle Charles, y'all. You know, that's all I gotta say. Oh, I can imagine you have a wonderful now. singing voice. <laughs> probably, probably uh, learn how to sing from watching Sister Act two so many times. Oh, dude, absolutely! That was like my singing school right there. I learned so much from that movie. This is about life. Miss Fuji herself. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> was Hill like the only actor seen in nearly that as movie? many movies as you have, Brian, this year? But I did a review last week for a film called Stillborn. That was a really interesting film. About a mother who had twins and lost one of them during the pre during the birth, and there you're not sure if the the dead twin is haunting the living twin throughout the film. It's like a supernatural film. The idea of it was really cool. Kind of like a good night, um, mommy type of deal. <laughs> it was uh, it was a lot slower, but I mean, it was it wasn't that great. I'm I'm not gonna lie, but it was watchable. Um, another one I saw just the other night was called The Lodgers, which also involves a set of twins that are both living, Ooh, but they are, it's I'm set listening. in, it's set in <laughs> Ireland in the 1930s. So it's a period piece and they are cursed to live inside this house because of entities that will not let them leave. And there's like three different rules that they have to abide by. They have to be in their rooms by midnight. They cannot leave each other alone and they can't try to escape the house. And it, it was a really interesting film because it had outer lying issues of, um, spoiler alert, incest. <laughs> and the two brothers? A uh, boy and a girl. I was going to say, I mean, this is already starting to sound like something on Spankwire. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got twins, you know. We got <laughs> it was a really interesting film. It was shot really well, but it is, yeah, really slow, slow period piece. But uh, while uh, Ray's gone and I have the podium, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a sh quick shout out to the indie film Red Eye. It was it was an okay movie. Um, Tristan, I I believe he did a comment earlier on our podcast earlier. Yes. He's a young director, like for a first full length feature film, he did a really good job. And I think the, the sky is the limits for those guys. Yeah. I hear it right. I was really good. A lot of people have been talking about it. I haven't seen it yet. It had an interesting twist. I mean, it, it is your run of the mill slasher for the most part, but it had an interesting twist at the end. So I'm looking forward to what they have to come up with in the future. For sure. Well, at the risk of spoilers, does anyone go to hell or end up in space? Uh, I cannot yeah. confirm nor deny. Does anyone get back in the habit? <laughs> <laughs> How do 
that's your deal breakers for me, but I'm just, you know, I just like to know what I'm getting into. I don't want to know. Not about total, <laughs> not total deal breakers. <laughs> they either go to hell, go to space, or become a nun. It's the yes. only way to avoid fucking. The classic, the three, the tales as old as time. You know, the classic, <laughs> classic plot points. You just described the plot for Critters 4, so I oh, appreciate it. Critters you. 4 is awesome. <laughs> it's Critters 3 starring Leonardo DiCaprio in his first role. Uh, not as good as, as 4. Critters 2 is the best Easter movie ever made. Critters 2 is like the legitimately <laughs> awesome. I love it. That is a fucking like, Scream Factory release. So, it, so in your order, is it Critters 2, Critters 4, Critters, and Critters 3? I'd say Critters 2, Critters 1... Or just critters, because critter like the first one's probably the best made of them, and it def that one has the '50s like throwback spirit in it the most. Like the Chidao brothers obviously grew up loving like old sci-fi cheesy movies. Yeah, it kind of had that drive-in theater feel. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It had that definitely, but just better production value. And then Critters Two is just fucking amazing because it got the giant critter ball and stuff. Like you can't beat that. Critters <laughs> Four is surprisingly good, like. It's, I don't know, it's, it's actually really dark, you know? It, it reminds me of, like, um, it reminds me of, like, an early 90s Roger Corman movie, like those sci-fi flicks he was doing, almost like Carnosaur 3. Like, it's kind of got that vibe to it. Um, but Critters, I mean, Critters 3 is definitely, the, the, the out of the four of them, is definitely the weakest link, despite oh, yeah. Leo's performance. Well, you know well, you, you how bad you can tell a movie is, is when you see the front cover and it gives you the title of the movie... But all the way in the bottom right or the top right of the of the of the, um, the cover art, you see a circle, and inside that circle is a young Leonardo DiCaprio, and the title says "Critters 3, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, and he's like maybe like the fifth build name when you actually watch the movie, but it's like, hey, here is Leonardo DiCaprio. We're trying to market this film because it's, well, it's all about him. Very similar to uh, the Blu-ray Vinegar Syndrome put out of Jack Frost. It has on the cover in giant letters starring Shannon Elizabeth. Right. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, a, that's not actually on there, but she is not a fan of that movie. But it's kind of similar. It's like funny to see, you know, major major actors and actresses, and like you see with their dirty little secret movie. It yeah. comes out, you know, and people, but it, you know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. There's no shame in that. I, I stand to say that both Leonardo DiCaprio and Shannon Elizabeth have both been in worse movies than Jack Frost and Critters 3. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, wasn't Leonardo DiCaprio in like the 12th season of Growing Pains? Like, isn't that bad enough? <laughs> he was in that fucking, he was in that Aliens prequel Titanic. <laughs> you know what? Jennifer Aniston, like she's had like a really remarkable career. Yeah, yeah exactly. She, she yeah. was a leprechaun. I was I just thinking not... that too. <laughs> I thought Warren Davies played the leprechaun. That's well, really amazing makeup work. But uh, you know, <laughs> the was she a leprechaun in space as well? Yeah, yeah, she was a leprechaun. Everyone was a leprechaun. Uh, the guy who screams at the leprechaun. Up a lot of is the leprechaun. Francis. I love you. Yo, so like, <laughs> fuck it. I'm not saying it. How many people are watching still? Let's, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, we're on the topic of tonight when we're setting up is our favorite women in horror. While we're on the topic of Jennifer Aniston and Whoopi Goldberg, let's talk about, uh, other women in horror. Um, uh, Mary Aaron, American Psycho. Uh, she directed that, one of the best movies ever made. And Pet Cemetery. Oh, God, yes. Pet Cemetery is one of my favorite um, Stephen King movies. There's top three Stephen King movies for me. There is uh, The Shining, of course, Pet Cemetery, and my third favorite Stephen King movie of all time. And uh, feel free to disagree, but it's Maximum Overdrive because he directed the entire movie on Coke. Wait, I'm sorry. When you said the first favorite, that's a really weird way to pronounce Silver Bullet. Uh <laughs> Is that the one with Gary Busey where he just shows his teeth the entire time? Oh my god, yeah. And he's not even the werewolf. He's just like a drunk, drunk uncle. <laughs> I'm the really acting in that movie, honestly. Um, Silver Bull is amazing. Maximum Overdrive is... It's, it's, it's got its moments. It does. The steamroller scene and stuff. Like, it's just... And kudos to them for even fucking, like, making that movie. Yes. Like, 
And I love, I love the. Uh, so when I first saw it as an adult, like, you know, not first saw it. When I watched it as an adult, I was watching. And I saw the ACDC cameo in the beginning with the their truck getting crushed, or whatever. And then they had the title track, um, you know, "Who Made Who?" That was in the or that was in the soundtrack. Yeah. And I'm like sitting there, and I'm not a fan of ACDC at all. I'll, I know I'm gonna get crucified for that, but I was like, you know what? Maybe this actually isn't one of their like really immature songs. Like, who made who? That's a really interesting concept. You know, did man create God? Did God create man? And then it's like, no, nah, it's about trucks. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Fuck you. Like, what the- Clearly, we made trucks. You know, like I don't think anyone has ever. This is not a chicken or the egg type of <laughs> debate here. Like, we clearly created semis. You know. But well, you know, it was uh, who was uh, who, the voice of um of uh, Lisa Simpson was the Eardley Smith. Uh, she's in that yeah. movie, and I you know, about- like when she's in the car and she's screaming, they're getting chased. All I hear is Lisa Simpson screaming. You know what you what you were saying earlier, like watching it as an adult. A um, couple <laughs> comments here. Um, we have uh, uh, do 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 uh, James Nurath saying, "What do you think about Christmas Evil?" <laughs> Christmas Evil is the best Christmas movie of all time. We we discussed this extensively at Days of the Dead, and I hear the director's a real sweetheart too. Very very easy to work with, from what I'm told by multiple. But Christmas Evil is fucking amazing, and anyone I'll die on that hill. That movie is phenomenally amazing. It really is, and it, Vinegar Syndrome did a beautiful Blu-ray of it with a gorgeous transfer and great extras, and you should all fucking check it out. Absolutely. I definitely want to. I, I remember watching Christmas Evil back in the day, and I was just like, oh my god. Well, it's yes. just so fucking weird. It's like a weird art house movie. It's not a slasher flick at all. Mm-mm. No. You know, I, you know, when it comes to when it comes to Christmas movies, you know, obviously, you know, we, we're we're fans here of uh of Christmas related horror films, uh, such as yourself for you know making I'm dreaming of a white doomsday uh there's there, there really is a lack of christmas horror movies lately i think like you know before your film the last good one was santa's sleigh and that was With like oh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> I don't know i'd say that was the last good one i mean that was certainly a christmas oh, horror movie. you know it was good <laughs> and eating reindeer <laughs> well, I mean, there was a big burst of Christmas stuff coming out after Krampus. Uh, uh, did you see Better Watch Out? I, I hated that movie. I don't know why. Really? It's a, oh, that's yeah. not what I'm talking about. I liked it a lot. I thought it was. I thought it was an interesting. It was a little. It's one of those movies. It's one of those thrillers that's so the plot is so had, uh, dependent on coincidences and like timing that <laughs> it unravels pretty easily once you get into like the logistics of it. But I thought it was cool. I really like the paint can scene. I don't know why people keep saying that it's like Home Alone mixed with like the strangers. Like, there's very little Home Alone in that at all. It just happens yeah. to be a kid, and they make a reference to Home Alone. But I don't think that it really has that vibe to no, it. Otherwise, if anything, it's like um, it's it's like uh, uh, what was that one that Roberts and Meckes did for Tales from the Crypt? It's like a uh, uh, Christmas sleigh or whatever. All what the house. Was it? All through the house. It was all through the house meets Dunstan checks in. Like that's the best way you can describe that. Movie. There's another one that Criterion just put out. Actually, it was right after they did Night of the Living Dead. They did it through the Criterion. Dunstan checks in. The unrated version. Yep, it wasn't as good as Ed. I'll say that. That's one of the girl that played baseball. <laughs> no. um, but it was good. It was good. <laughs> There's like a feature like making a documentary called Dunstan Checks Out. <laughs> and that was just about how the monkey itself, like the actor or the the, cre- the the creature, the the animal itself, went through a real severe depression halfway through the film and just didn't give a fuck anymore. So his acting just kind of went downhill, and they had to cut around it. So that's on there. Really interesting well, behind the scenes. Well, you know that checks out. <laughs> you know that the unrated version of Dunstan checks in um, is not actually starring Jason Alexander. It in fact stars Michael Richards as the um, the father. Oh shit. It was like a, yeah. a Hicks Aliens recast type of deal, right? And and Dunson is actually played um, by a saber toothed tiger. Wow! I have no idea. You know, what it's going true they say that like the camera does add ten pounds because I and you know what they can do with lighting these days because it looks like a fucking chimpanzee to me. Like it's quite impre- It's quite impressive. You wouldn't even know. So it's a saber toothed tiger with a wig. Is that what you're telling me? 
Yes, played by Jason wow. Alexander. That's amazing. Holy shit. <laughs> that's but, that's um, really, really something. Speaking of Criterion Collection... I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. Oh, oh, dude, I saw it the other night, and then I had to re- I had to cancel the order because I didn't have enough money. But I'm gonna buy it tomorrow. I'll one I'll one up you. Oh wait, dang it, it's the same thing. Oh, I've got my <laughs> back there. That's Did you get the? Uh, I know a uh, uh, Mill Creek. Um, <laughs> yeah. Release that blue uh, you can buy for like seven dollars or something. Oh, dude, I heard that was garbage. <laughs> like no, VHS no. rip. I think I'm wrong is Night of the Living Dead now under copyright because of the Criterion release, no. or is it the end no. of it? It's Forever still public domain. Yeah. Okay. But the um the people who worked on Night of the Living Dead get paid if um if people keep buying copies of the Criterion okay. collection. It's not like seventeen bucks. Like that's super cheap. Mm-hmm. It's, got some, it's got a nice bit of uh, features on it too. I was about to say, does it have the Night of the Living Bread uh, parody and stuff on there from the other releases? Um, not sure, but I know that there's deleted scenes. Um, I but there weren't. Wasn't there supposed to be a? Uh, wasn't there supposed to be a, um, a Night of the Living Dead uh, remaster with the with like more with new footage? Scenes? Yeah. Oh well, god, like, that was the, the deleted footage. Anchor Bay did that like 15 years ago or something. Yeah, that yeah. was embarrassing. They got no, 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 not not new footage, but footage that was never used in the original. Um, that oh, George no. Romero actually. This was added directed. footage that John John Russo did. Mushu, yeah. the little dog. <laughs> What's the fucking guy that played the first zombie? Bill Hines, is that his name? Bill Hensman. Yeah, because oh, they Harry. Had him reprise his role as a zombie, and they he gained like 60 pounds, and he's obviously like 50 years older. And they have him like they're intercutting the footage. I'm like, this is not gonna pass. Like, I'm sorry. Wasn't his movie Zombie Flesh Eaters? Uh, wasn't that like uh, a yes. it's called Flesh Eater? Flesh Eater, yeah, yeah. It was called Flesh Eater. Yeah. It came in one of those zombie crazy. four packs. Yeah, it was uh, also there was Children of the Living Dead that was supposed to be like an unofficial sequel to Night of the Living Dead. That was really bad too. That had so some many in it. So, so I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing Night of the Living Bread, but there is a new program featuring filmmakers Frank Darabont, Guillermo del Toro, and Robert Rodriguez. Who are those guys? What do they do? <laughs> Never heard of them. <laughs> Looks like there's lots of different features that are kind of new. Yo, I heard there's like a soundtrack one and a bunch of like everyone's been raving about this release. I have yet to watch it, but Ray, Ray I don't know where the fuck he went, but he says it's amazing looking. Yeah, no, I'm, it's like the best it'll ever look. I'm excited I'll, to see it. I'll unbox mine right now. Ooh, this is comes, with, comes with a cool little poster of the little girl in it. So here we go. Yeah. This is a horror syndicate exclusive. Ooh, I do get a poster. So it's got two pretty little discs inside. It's got some artwork. On the back, that's awesome. Definitely want to get on this from Criterion Collection. So let's take a look at this poster. They actually gave you a two for one, so it's a poster on one side and then all like the liner notes and stuff on the other side. Oh, that's cool. That way, if you frame it, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> let's get a. Oh wow, yeah. that's a shitload of liner notes. Holy fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's like a cool. liner novel. You know, it's a shame that this was released um, after the passing of George Romero. Yeah, that is a shame. You know, I, there, Don't smoke, kids. Lesson of the day. Apparently, that um, there was um, copies of this going around with forged signatures of uh, George A. Romero on them. That's selling on eBay for like massive amounts of money. Thank God they got reported. It doesn't surprise me. You got fucking scoundrels doing that kind of shit all the time. Yeah, that's a shame. If you just follow any hard DVD page, like there's all the like. Wasn't Fright Night two like uh, on Blu-ray? Like, yeah, they had they had a bootleg Blu-ray of that going around. Yeah, it was a bootleg. It was. It was never the official. Um, Blu-ray. 
So I don't know that it's got an official Blu-ray release. I don't think it does. No. The DVD was hard to find too. That was out of print like quick, and it was on like yeah. I have like the VHS of it, and that's all I've ever seen of it. Mm -hmm. All I remember from Fright Night Two was a roller skating vampire. Oh God, it wasn't as good. It was kind of hard to watch actually. Chris Sarandon's little sister was kind of hot though. What was Chris Sarandon in it though? I don't know if he was. <laughs> so I just watched the Resurrected, the Dan O'Bannon Lovecraft movie that he stars in. Man, that oh, movie. Yeah. Oh, Everyone yeah. told me that was like amazing. I bought, I blind bought that. Actually, I'm sorry. Lex Quinn blind bought that Blu-ray for me for Christmas. I was about to buy it, and then she got it for me. But that movie is straight up shit. Like, the special effects are fucking amazing. But man, does that movie suck. <laughs> and then I found like Dan O'Bannon had like all these health problems during the set. I'm not really sure what that means. Everyone kind of dodged it in the interviews, but he was doing like real bad. So he only directed like half the movie, but everyone's like swearing by it. They're like, no, it's incredible. And I'm like, watch it again. Like it's not. Well, I'll take that as not a seal of approval. No, no. I just don't like Chris Sarandon. I really don't. Like, I don't think he's like listening to his interviews. He seems like a very cool dude, but I, even in Fright Night, I wasn't really wild about him. He just looks like a soap opera star that walked into a horror movie, which I guess is kind of the point. But yeah. It just, I don't know. You know what? Uh, I, I do give Chris Sarandon credit for being in Nightmare Before Christmas, even though I'm sure that Danny Elfman could have just played the entire role. Wait, what, his... what was he in uh, Nightmare Before Christmas? He was uh, Jack. Wait, no shit. I know that Danny Elfman did the scene. Yeah. And they, they cast Chris Sarandon to play the voice of Jack because he sounded close to Danny Elfman. Yeah, how did I not know that? I did not know that either. Jack, I like Chris Sarandon a lot. <laughs> and, um, I take with, back every fucking thing I said. <laughs> same thing with uh, Catherine O'Hara. Like, I think she was... No, actually, she I think she sang her parts and spoke her parts because she was well-established by that. I'm pretty sure she sings. Yeah. But, you know, just hearing that Danny Elfman was just only singing those parts and not actually acting those parts. Danny Elfman's, like, one of my favorite people. Ever. Yeah, he's really... Like, Very his talented. work with Oingo Boingo and just, you know, everything now to doing, like, you know, the score to Justice League, throwing little excerpts from, uh, you know, the, the original 1989 Batman in the, in the soundtrack with everything. Like, Danny Elfman's... Did he do Tales favorite. from the Crypt, too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The the Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the like Ed Wood, all the Tim Burton scores. He, um, uh, the fucking opening of Texas Chainsaw 2 is an Oingo Boingo song playing. Um, yeah. The, during the chase scene on the bridge when he gets the, the yuppies get their heads sawed open, that's Oingo Boingo. Yeah, No One Lives Forever. Mm -hmm. That came from the, um, Dead Man's Party album. And that was like it's a huge dead album. Man. Like, Every song from that album was like in a movie in the eighties. I, I know that um, Back to School had Dead Man's Party. Um, oh really? Yeah, I I think Bachelor Party had a few songs um, from that album, if not maybe their first album. But yeah, no, huge Oingo Boingo fan here. I just wish that they were young enough to tour because I know Danny Elfman like wanted to not do it anymore because he was losing his hearing but it, you ever see those guys live on stage they're fucking incredible and like wanted to not do it anymore because he's losing his hearing but, but yeah those guys but definitely go check it out um i think their last tour was like in 1992 or 1994 and it was like their like halloween special or something like that and like people showed up dressed as beetlejuice and like it was like full 90s like tim burton meets Oingo Boingo. It was That's like, awesome. yeah, and I was just like, God damn it, why did I have to be six years old and living Dude, in America? For Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands, Edward Scissorhands is one of my favorite scores of all time. Like, that score is goddamn beautiful. Mm -hmm. But he, I love, you can always tell, even to the Goosebumps soundtrack for the movie, the Jack Black movie, mm -hmm. um, you Always, when I first was watching it, I was in the theater with my nephews, and I'm like, this sounds like fucking Danny Elfman. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> and the credits come up, and I'm like, in front of them, they're like six years old. I'm like, no fucking sh I mean, no freaking way. <laughs> <Danny Elfman. laughs> 
<laughs> but no, he's such a, he's got, he's just, his range is incredible. Like I love, I mean, you can always tell it's him, but he can go like super cartoony, like almost carnival esque. And then he can get like real, mm-hmm. like dramatic. And so I just, I love it. I really do. And he, I feel like he's one of those people that really picks and chooses what projects he gets attached to. And I really, mm-hmm. I respect that. He's always doing like really good stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a shame because like the Tim Burton movies kind of just fell off, like the roller coaster yeah. somewhere. And but like early like or like late eighties, early nineties, Tim Burton, Danny Elfman, like the collaboration was just flawless. It was like oh the my best god, you could ever visually and you know, just experience ever. But you know, hi, I'm Scott Pekulski. Early like we're like late eighties. So what's that? Uh, Scott Mikulski just said hi in the comment section. That is the one of the fellows that's um, responsible for, if I'm not mistaken, the character design of Carnival, which is my favorite arcade game of all time, the shooter. Oh shit! Um, which I have downstairs. I have a Carnival machine, but that is he is uh, he worked on that. So, hello, Scott. Welcome. Hey, special wow, guest. Really cool. Carnival- Find a fucking arcade that has it and play the shit out of it because it's one of the best games ever made. It's, that's the one with the shotgun gun con, right? Oh, absolutely. That game freaked Damn. me out. That I think I remember rage. that shit. It's uh, it's like uh, what I love about it is it's got like it's like a house of the dead. It's a rail shooter, but the camera's always moving and it always ends up on like Dutch angles and stuff. And it really has that like fun house feel to it. Like it's just really dynamic camera moves. It's got a really fucked up sense of humor, and mm-hmm. it's just. Soup, like you can just see the love that went into that game. Like it's just wonderful. I absolutely yeah. it. It was one of my I dreams mean, as a kid to have a, a one of them, and I finally was able to buy a machine, so it gets played constantly here. Yeah, and that was like a that was like a late '90s game too, and the graphics for its time were just awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I used to play yeah. shit, shit. I want to say that, that was at a bowling alley I used to go to as a kid, where oh. like you know, yeah, you know, that area was everywhere. Yep. Yeah, the best. Maximum Risk was hilarious. Wait, what was the one cowboy game where it was like it was super nineties and you shot the people and they died on screen like that, but then they like flickered. Oh, are you talking like, about uh, Lethal Enforcers? Well, Lethal Enforcers Two is a cowboy centric one, but I'm not sure if that's what I you're. I think you're talking about Gunsmoke. They had a game of Gunsmoke. Yeah. Was it Gunsmoke? No shit, was, okay. But that was like a mid '80s, like late '80s arcade game, and then it was like on the NES too, where you would go sideways and shoot them, and then they'd like fall funny. And yeah, I think it was called Gunsmoke, if I remember right. I don't know. I'm getting old. There's like the side-scrolling arcade game Sunset Riders that was also a cowboy. That was oh uh, my super- god, I love that game. I have that downstairs. I have a, I'm a huge retro game collector, so I've got a lot of that stuff. Love. Oh, well, I think. We'll have to get you on an episode of uh, Survival, Surviving Retro Horror. Oh, yeah. Do you get Lex on there, too? She'll, she's like an encyclopedia of old horror games. It's wonderful. <laughs> now, uh, now let me uh, ask you this question. Uh, you, uh, like, you're familiar. You're probably going to be... Uh, you're probably going to know this question ahead of time as soon as I mention this title um, and classic video games. But the video game... Um, the movie Phenomena is... Didn't they base the video game Clock Tower 3? Off of that, if I'm not mistaken, oh. or the Clock Tower. I didn't know that. Clock yeah. Tower Three. I'm, I'm very familiar with Clock Tower Three. Actually, just recently replayed it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. The phenomena. The the uh, the the Giorno movie. Um, <laughs> the Giorno. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the 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 he's already he's already picking it up, Brian. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, and then uh, was it Opera that was directed by Red Baron? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, this no, it's, this it's, uh, opera? Oh, yeah, I love that movie so much. It's so good. <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, Sargento, um, <laughs> is that, is, I don't remember Phenomena. Isn't that the one about the fucking bugs? Like, you, yes. You control yeah. bugs? Yeah. Was that Conley. Yeah, they um the main girl's name was Jennifer, and uh, she was inside like this uh this school or something like that, and her she was looking for her father. I don't know, but the um the game based its game off of the Phenomena movie, except I, you're being chased down by a killer with the huge. Head well, in Clock Tower Three, it's not the scissors. In Clock Tower Three, there's like five people. It's um, there's uh the first one is a guy with a big sledgehammer, and that's in like London during World War One during the bombings. Then there's 
a guy who's like the acid bath killer. He's in a gas mask and he sprays you with acid. Then there's Scissor Twins. They're like these weird, like Japanese kabuki looking people. And then there's uh, you're like getting the, the the main villains like this old guy. I don't maybe that was Clock Tower. The original Clock Tower, you're getting chased by Scissor Man. I'll find out right right now for you guys. Yeah, I'm, that'd be interesting if that's uh, the case. But Clock Tower 1 is like one of the best survival horror games ever made. That game still scares the shit out of me. And then Clock Tower 2 is like totally unrelated to the other ones. And you're like, you're like a Japanese girl who you you put uh, an amulet in the sink and then you turn into like a guy who bleeds purple or like a big purple guy and then you can like kill zombies. It doesn't make any fucking sense. It's pretty much unplayable. It's really awful. I think Clock Tower 1 was the only one of that series I ever played. That's the only one you need. Well, the, the Clock Tower 1 is technically a Super Nintendo game. Clock Tower for PlayStation, the first fear is like a sequel, but, it, you know, I think the I think Clock that Tower... Been, that would have been the one I played because it was yeah, on the PS1. The Nintendo 1 is only in Japan. I uh, never got an American release. Here we go. There's a whole Ooh, fandom based on Clock Tower and Phenomena um, here on uh, Wiki. Uh, both main characters are named Jennifer. Same same appearances. Wait, uh, Jennifer is Clock Tower One. Alessa is Clock Tower Three. Okay, so it's Clock Tower One. Or Clock Tower Two. Well, it's yeah. Clock Tower One is in the PlayStation One game. Is Clock Tower One? Okay. Knowledge bomb. Yeah. yeah. There's like there's like twenty different um comparisons to Clock Tower and Phenomena. Yeah. Clock so. Tower One is in the PlayStation One game. Is Clock Tower One? That's okay, crazy. Now, okay. yeah. there's Thank like, God there's for like, that. Um, you know, I, I figured because we were talking about video games and. It's such is that. So I think I think you should tackle uh, Friday the Thirteenth on the original NES sometime. Oh boy, I've got a, a boxed copy of that downstairs too. I have it. It's here. That game's ahead of its time. It really was. I mean, it's not a great game, but I think it gets a lot of unfair shit. Like it oh, was yeah. a very game for what it was i mean like i remember fighting or you know teenagers fighting vampires in the friday the 13th movies like mm -hmm. you know it just makes sense. Sense. i mean i guess it makes as much continuity sense as jason goes to hell <laughs> <laughs> damn it right where the hell is where's Ryan? i mean I, that I was I dropped that one for him i thought that he looked different you know he's a cartoon skull now i really <laughs> <laughs> I think Razor, who is still missing in action, he directed me to a YouTube video where a dude beat Friday the 13th in like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all There's randomly like generated. If you can hit the right things, then you can win the game instantaneously. As long as you have to, to kill Jason, you don't actually have to do anything else. Yep. But you have to start with a certain character and you have to go a certain way to start out the game. Like, Oh, it's super, yeah, because all the stats and shit. Like, the game is really hard. I've never beaten it personally. I've gotten close. But I've never been able to beat it. Up oh, there he is. Hey, hey. hey, we were just talking about Friday the 13th on the original Nintendo, Ray. No, I heard. I had some other things I had to take care of. You're always busy, man. Well, what happens? You're, you're a boss. Mm -hmm. A yeah. busy boss. But you know, I was kind just of talking about the YouTube are? video where it took the dude like 30 minutes to beat Lord the game. Chaos. Ah, Fred Williamson. <laughs> You're that boss. He is. is that a picture from one of those spaghetti -O westerns? Uh, he was in a movie called Boss, yes. and, I, and I actually had him sign it. And he played football for the Kansas City Chiefs and the Oakland Raiders. One of my favorite movies. <laughs> I went up to him like, "Will you sign this for me?" And he just looks at me, and goes. Black man in a white man's town. And I'm just like, yes. <laughs> Are you talking about who's the boss? <laughs> <laughs> you that, know exactly. That movie probably has about. the best <laughs> Western theme there. song. It does have a great theme song. Oh I, I I remember hearing that theme song almost every day in my head when I was uh, working in a pizza place. That's still my reality. <laughs> <laughs> so how but, long have you worked at that place? The Mike? Yeah. Uh, six 
years. If you watch the stall, you can see how I feel about it. <laughs> Is that the actual location? Yeah, we actually shot the movie in there. We just changed the sign. Um, and then the bathroom is actually filmed in an abandoned warehouse. Well, the warehouse is no longer there. Now it's a uh, luxury apartment. They tore it down and put that. But um, so, uh, but everything else was shot there, yeah. So what's it actually called? Um, I'm not actually at liberty to say that mm. because I've gotten uh, some weird internet stalkers and some death threats in the past. So I will refrain from, from mentioning it, but I can message it to you. Yeah, it's not it's pizza though. That's uh, that is not that was a digital sign that we. It's we Domino's. Made. It's Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone has ever lasted sixteen years at Domino's. I don't think that's ever happened. <laughs> I think so, actually at that point they turned you into the Noid. <laughs> <laughs> so after working there that long, are you still able to eat the food? Um, I really prefer Argento pizza personally. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. No, I, I don't eat pizza very much anymore. Like it was, it's a kind of a shitty thing, because as, especially as a horror fan, like a '90s kid. Um, pizza parties were like the thing. You know, you rent a bunch of movies, your friends, you have pizza. Like I can't do that anymore. People are like, oh, let's grab some pizzas. I'm like, let's not. You I'm know, on the pie. Uh, I get like PTSD flashbacks whenever I smell pizza cooking now. Uh, but I do actually. I eat a lot of frozen pizza, like Red Baron and DiGiorno. I legitimately, I I love it because it's. Not, <laughs> Right, so our pizza at the shop, we make everything from fucking. I shred the cheese by hand. We fucking make our own sauce. We make our own dough every day. Like that's it's like top tier. So like it's an easy pizza shop there for people come from out of state. And I'm fucking at home eating Red Baron. I'm like, yeah, that's the stuff. You put a little Fuck bit of Felucci on it. Put a little Felucci on it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Only when I've got cat in the brain, though. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, I'm super excited to see you at NJ HorrorCon. I know it's going to be a yeah, great yeah, time. Be a It'll be yeah. really fun. Because, you know, you and your, your girlfriend are huge video game horror fans, and my wife and I are huge video game horror fans. I actually made my wife sit down and uh, beat Resident Evil Remastered for the PlayStation 4. And, oh, yeah. Uh, she, recently. she beat it. She didn't die, but she had about 48 saves. So, <laughs> That's about normal for, you know, someone just trying to play Resident Evil. Yeah. That's how I used to be when I was a kid. Yeah. That remaster is amazing. Like, that, the, the remake they did for GameCube, like, that really is, like, one of the best Resident Evil games. Like, I loved the hell out of that. I tried to get her to play Resident Evil 5 with me, but the controls were crap, and I was like, oh, it's the only game you can really enjoy co-op with. But well, not true. 6 was fun. Yeah, Resident Evil 5 is also crap, but, um, you know. <laughs> I'm like, turning in her grave right now. I fucking I hate Resident Evil 4 and 5. I really did. 4 was the death of that franchise. <laughs> Everyone loves it. If it wasn't called Resident Evil, I probably wouldn't hate it, but I still wouldn't like it. It just it makes no what sense. What do you think of the uh, the the new direction they they're going with first person surviving? So I liked Seven a lot. I thought Seven felt a lot like an old Resident Evil game, even though it was you know different in style and gameplay. But I mean, it was good. It felt like an old survival horror game again. It was a lot of atmosphere. It wasn't super heavy on the action. Um, I mean, I had some problems with it, like the whole Lucas thing was kind of out of place. Mm -hmm. but it was still cool. Um, I'm curious to see what they're going to do with Resident Evil 2, the remake. I'm really excited. I hope that they do, like, fix camera angles and they actually, like, redux it like the, um, excuse me, the original they did. But well, They're going to have to remaster the third one, then. Yeah, we have been talking about that a lot, and I think that they should do Code Veronica as well. <laughs> Maybe take Wesker out of it. That's the problem. Wesker's the lamest character. Like, Lex is obsessed with him. Why the fuck is he, like, he raised you in the first one, he's dead. That's the end. He's in the game for like he's in the game as much as Doug Bradley's in Hellraiser, and then, <laughs> that's it. And then they have like this like seventeen page backstory for him in every game of like convoluted nonsense. It's like fucking Christ. There's a there's a virus outbreak and there are monsters. The end. That's the plot well, of Resident. Well, I'll, I'll one up you because when when the Sega um, Dreamcast got first announced and Resident Evil Code Veronica, which was you know that was the exclusive. It was an exclusive Sega Dreamcast game. 
And uh, they're just like, hey, by the way, Wesker is back. And then you see, like, Wesker's, like, red eyes and stuff like that. That was cool hearing about because you're like, oh, I haven't seen him since 1996. And, yeah. you know, it's great that he's coming back. I wonder what kind of uh, element they're going to bring with, with him. You know, is he a zombie? What is he? And then we got the Resident Evil Code Veronica on the PlayStation 2 where they added more Wesker scenes, which was, like, mm-hmm. overkill. And, oh, yeah. But it was it – was, you know, it was still fun to see Wesker, um, you know, make his comeback. But then we continue with the movies, with with Wesker doing like backflips played by three different actors, and then we have Resident Evil Five, where it's where is catching missiles, catching. Well, I mean, Chris Redfield breaks beats the shit out of Boulder. And yeah, like, remember the first Resident Evil where you ran for your fucking life when boulders yeah, came I'm after you, punching it. Like, yeah. I just don't understand why they went in that direction at all. It's like, first off, we don't need those characters. The characters from Resident Evil are complete cardboard cutouts. Like, it doesn't matter. I love Leon and Claire. I thought they were actually fairly fleshed out characters. But we don't fucking need Ada Wong to be, like, a sex symbol secret agent who can do, like, backflips and has a grappling gun and a grappling hook gun and Thank all this you. dumb shit. It's like, why? why? We don't need an intricate backstory to Resident Evil. Like, the games are so simplistic in their plot. They're big B-movies. You yeah. don't need all this crap. It's like, just make another town, there's another outbreak. Hey, here's some inexplicably bizarre puzzles that they put... Like, I'd love to live in one of the Resident Evil houses where it's <laughs> like, yeah, I gotta go grab my suit. It's like, shit, I need, like, seven keys, two plugs, like, a couple paintings and a few statues to, like, put around and do stuff to... Go get know, the medallion. Labyrinth. Yeah, the medallion. <laughs> well, the last time that we, we got, like that type of Resident Evil original gameplay and story was uh, Outbreak 1 and 2. And, you know, a lot of people hated it. Um, You know, it could have been a really good game. It was good already, but it could have been better. It could have had uh, better online communication with players instead of using the right analog stick. I thought Um, it was ahead of its time, what they were trying to do, but trying to play a single player was miserable. Yes. Because it's just yeah. the NPCs were just terrible. The scenarios they didn't make any sense. Like, I wish they would have tried to make like an actual plot, like that just one solid plot, and then you just kind of jump into each level. Yeah, it didn't work. The Leech Man thing really drove me nuts. That, oh, the hospital. That level, man. I got glitched out with the giant leech at the end. You have to like do the shove move to kill it. And I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah, um, the first level was great. Hellfire was probably my second favorite level. I wasn't really, I didn't really care about the uh, hospital level or um, uh, the the labs where you go down to the um, the labs in Raccoon City. And but the last scenario was fun too, where you're in the um, the college, and uh, uh, the tyrant is just like kind of just stalking you through the hallways. That one I didn't see. I don't think I played through the whole thing then. Uh yeah, no, I mean, but it was you know for for its time, you know, it, it was fun. I remember I would call up my cousin and we would play, you know, together online, but on the phone because you know that's how bad the communication was. You couldn't just like yeah. chat with each other. But you know, but yeah, I mean, the Resident Evil series just kind of went fucking weird. And uh, uh, Evil, with this but, gun, I must survive <laughs> with my handgun. <laughs> But six was fun. I'm trying to get Ray to play online with me. It's like Lex has six is like the worst game ever made. I only saw clips of it. Oh my god, six is so much fun. Only I trying to save the president, or is that the fourth one? No, that's the president's daughter. I'm sorry. I'm not a bad enough to save the president's daughter, so I can't play Resident Evil Four. Give six a chance. That's all I'm saying to you. I thought it. I I dissed on it for years. I first played it, I hated it, and then I played all the other scenarios, and I'm like, okay, this game's really fucking fun. How much motorcycle ramping can I expect? Here are they, here they are. Ray, oh, you're not the... Yes. Seven, I, can't, I got the Xbox 360 room. you got to get the PlayStation. We got to play. You double dipped. Did you double dip? Code Veronica, that's good. Well, I have... Uh... Two versions of this because I got the Dreamcast version also. Yeah, I think I have the Dreamcast one. I bought the Dreamcast when I came out. GameCube, do you put a chainsaw controller? No. Are we all in agreement that that Raccoon Chronicles game sucked? Yeah. Yes. 
what was it called? Raccoon Operations or something? Oh, I Raccoon. Raccoon. Yeah. I was I not a fan of that. I'm still pissed off about it. Yeah, this is a great version of the game. Yeah, that was a beautiful game. I think that was a forever thing. Zero is garbage. Zero is absolute garbage. I hated every minute of that game. I <laughs> love the game discs. Oh, that's cool. The tiny little discs. Yeah, the tiny little, little discs. I like that they're red. Yeah, I was pissed off when I bought the remaster because I thought Zero was going to be fun because I never played through it. I'd seen clips, but fuck, man. That was like every minute they're like, how can we piss the player off and make this worse? And the creature design is like, hey, here's bugs, but they're big. Here's a scorpion, but it's big. And I'm like, man, look at that creative. That meant continuity sucked. It was oh, like... Yeah, you're about five. What's that? Is that five you're talking about? Uh, no, it's uh, zero. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, they hit something like five, like a giant scorpion or some shit. I don't. I didn't play through five. Doesn't five have a giant, uh, giant worm? And that's Code Veronica has the big worm in the cave that Chris fights. I don't remember. I played it a couple of times. All I can remember is Sheva and how annoying she was. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the, the partner character, or whatever. What do you think of uh, Lex? Really likes the um. Uh, what the fuck are they called? Revelations, the ones that try to patch up all the plot holes between the games. Oh god. He you plays Lara Croft. I mean, I'm sorry, Jill Valentine in a skin tight wetsuit after her breast implants. After her breast implants. I'm into that. I mean. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I wear wetsuits all the time, but. I played Revelations two with my wife, and we beat it, and we were like, "This was the worst fucking game." that we played together. And then we played Resident Evil 5, and she just gave up in the first level. And I don't blame <laughs> her. It was... no, she's smart. But 6 six wasn't bad. Give 6 a chance. And this is coming from a diehard Resident We could agree on most things with Resident Evil, Mike. And I'm telling you, give 6 a chance. I might. If I think if I bring it into the house, Lex will immolate me. Get her to play. Eating a lot. Whoa, what is that? What are you holding up there? The new Severin Blu-ray release of Lindsay, Umberto Lindsay. I don't know if I've ever actually seen that. It's going with my Cannibal collection. It came That's with a cool ass not... t-shirt. Why are you the one? I'm sorry, I gotta mispronounce the name because we gotta figure out what kind of food he needs to be labeled oh, under. Umberto Lindsay? How about fucking shit? Because everything <laughs> he... yeah. shit. I can't even joke. Like I hate his his like my God. Was it Hell of the Living Dead? Was one of the worst piles of garbage I've ever yep. sat through in my entire fucking yep. life. Did he Nightmare do rats? I have, yeah, I have rats. a bell on two disc. Did he What's do that? rats too? I think he did rats. Or was that Bruno Mattei? <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of uh, Bruno Mattei did Hell of the Living Dead. Yeah, it just had fucking music stolen from Dawn of the Dead, and like I think there was actually clips from Dawn of the Dead in there. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they just they're like, both they're both trash meisters. Like I'm not a fan at all. Yeah, Bruno Mattei did Zombie Three too. That's what I was thinking. That's right. You have the fucking flying head. Well, he did seventy percent of Zombie Three. Hey, at least it's not Zombie Five: The Killing Birds. <laughs> Yeah, dude, that so when when fucking Shriek Show was putting those out, I was so excited. I'm like, there's sequels to Zombie, and I was foolish and didn't know any better. And, <laughs> oh god, they're so bad. I have them too. So I never pressed all of them. I used to see the full page ads in Fango for those, and I'm like, oh man, another Zombie movie is gonna be great. <laughs> I will admit, out of the three, Zombie Three was probably the most watchable. I still have it, so that's something really funny. <laughs> Right. Oh, the grenade it blows up before it leaves like it just barely leaves his hand and the building explodes before the grenade gets there yeah I only have it because Lucio Fulci just did just a little bit enough work on it yeah. oh I'm sorry Fulci. Fulci I saw a hilarious interview with Fulci where he said he was talking about how Americans are the great butchers and that we steal from Italian cinema. I was laughing my ass off. What? Sorry, what was that, bud? <laughs> what? Yeah, he was a very angry man. I'm going to have to look that up. That's funny. It was on... Um, fuck, what disc was that? Oh, fuck. 
It's on. It's on one of the one of the fucking. Like, it might be like the Blue Underground Zombie or something. I don't remember. It was on. It's on something. But yeah, he was. Uh, he was not very friendly on American cinema. We need, to be more, we, we need to be more original. We like that. No wrong. Well, you know the guy who wrote Manji, the screenplay Manji. for uh, Zombie Three is the same writer for Trolls Two, or Troll no Two. Way. Yeah. Oh, a lot of... Sounds about right. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> but Troll Two was watchable. Like it's it's Troll bad. Two was amazing. I love Troll yeah. Two. It's extremely watchable, and especially the more people you have over, the It'll more probably laugh at me. But I've actually seen the documentary about that movie. But I've... you haven't seen the movie itself. Was it the worst movie ever made? Documentary yeah, the they did. Movie. Yeah, you need to watch the movie. The movie is so good. I just it's remember that the guy that's a dentist now, he's got the whitest teeth in the world. He's like, yeah. everybody remembers me from Troll 2. <laughs> he's talking about his first horror convention, and he's talking about how people don't floss. Yeah. <laughs> I also yeah. got another interesting pickup in the mail, too, besides Eating Alive. It's a Takashi Miike's 100th film, Blade of the Immortal. I haven't checked that out. I haven't seen any of his uh, samurai stuff. I'm not a big fan of kung fu and stuff, but I love Takashi Miike. It's a it's supposed to be a quasi horror film, so I I'll be interested to see how, how just how horrific it is. <clears throat> Why should like? Good. This edition of the Beyond has interviews with Lucio Fulci on it. Is that the Blu-ray or is that the, the Blu-ray? Okay. Yeah. Not, right. That's not where I saw it because I have the Anchor Bay tin box of that from way back when. I don't have the Blu-ray of it. Yeah, I also have the Fulci Collection DVD. But this City of Living Dead Blue Underground has a making of City of Living Dead. I kind of want to watch that. Oh shit! I didn't even know that was out on Blu-ray. Oh yeah. Yeah, all three of them are now finally. Excellent. Let's pick that up. I don't have any of them on Blu-ray. I really don't. I just felt like Fulci movies are something that I need to upgrade the quality of like i feel like they run but everyone said they're great the, they are so where'd brian go not he maybe had to take a pee break he's going to talk to that toilet it's going to be, give me pp i been talking to him hopefully potty trains his daughter that way So, well, this has been kind of fun, guys. We just had a nice little conversation. I disappeared um, for an hour. What's new? I wanted to see if you guys wanted to play a quick game before we wrap this up. I know it's getting late on the East Coast. Um, you guys want to do a Would You Rather? Sure. And you can think of one if you want. You don't have to, but I, I have one. Um. We used to play, uh, uh, you know, MFK on the other podcast, but I, th I thought a Would You Rather would be kind of fun because it, it covers so many different topics. But would you rather have no arms through your life or would you have arms through life and a never-ending asshole itch? <laughs> How severe of an itch? Like you can scratch it as much as you want, and it will not go away. Like, but like, how severe of an itch? Like, is it like really? Like, it's like a, a Wednesday bad day asshole itch. Hmm. Like you've been on the pot for a little while, and it's a bad bad day. I, so like, I feel like after you would just get used to it, because like any level of pain, really, the human body will get used to. I mean, I think not having arms would be more detrimental than having an eternal butthole itch. Yeah. I'd have to say, I'd go with the itch. I'd go with the itch and have the arms. <laughs> First, so many things with your arms. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> what is this? that? Sars Wars? Is that, what is that the Turkish about? Star Wars? It's, no, it's about Sars. It's about <laughs> people. It's, it's about the Sars virus. <laughs> And it turns people into vampire zombies. I have yet to watch this. <laughs> What's it this called? is SARS, SARS Wars. Wars. Oh boy. <laughs> Sounds like a sci-fi classic. 
I, I... <laughs> well, while you while you were away, Brian, I asked a "Would you rather?" Yes. Let's Would do you it. rather go through life having no arms, or going through life having arms, but a never-ending asshole itch? So you could scratch that itch as much as you want, and it'll never go away. You know what? Since I'm already living with it, uh, I would I just fuck it. I would I would just go with the never-ending asshole itch. <laughs> what can you do without arms? You can't play video games anymore. I know. <laughs> like I rather I rather just like get get like a mechanical device to continuously scratch my asshole while I play like Resident Evil Three for you guys. <laughs> if they're cold, <laughs> or just phone cab and stick it up your ass and. And just keep going, like you know, scooting like a dog. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Dude, here's the thing too. To think about, you know, you'll always have the pleasure of scratching that asshole itch. Like, hey, I mean, there's a certain joy in that. But you'll I'm also hope you're mostly washing your hands. Will yeah. I? Will I get a never-ending supply of Red Baron pizza? <laughs> well, that'll give you an asshole itch if you <laughs> if you eat a never-ending supply of it. I can tell you that much from personal experience. <laughs> 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 well, uh, Jerry, how long have you been sitting on that question? <laughs> uh, a little while. I came up with it. I thought of a bunch of them. Like, I have another one. Would you I just have one. You want to hear mine? Go for it. Here, okay, so listen. Would you rather stick a toothpick in your big toe toenail and kick a soccer ball as hard as you can, or take a nail file, a metal file, you know? Stick it between your teeth, bite down as hard as you can, and pull. Oh, I do the teeth. <laughs> I've sanded my teeth down before I had a chip in it, so I took sand, fine grit sandpaper, and I sanded it down because I can't afford to go to the dentist because I work in a fucking pizza shop for 16 years. <laughs> oh, man. I would have to go with the soccer ball one. I think I don't know. I, I have, I have, I have an issue with things on my teeth. I don't know. Ugh. That's a tough one. Yeah. I mean, the teeth would definitely be more permanent damage. Yeah. Yeah, but the toothache would hurt a lot. A lot. Hold on. Because I want some. So this is an interesting story. I got a copy of Shadow Creature on VHS off of eBay when I was very young and um, very excited. And there was a sticker on the label on the side. I was very pissed. So I was working my thumbnail under the sticker to try to get it off in one piece. And it gave way and my thumb slid. And there was a little paper thin metal like strip that was for their security system. Like, the, you know, the, the set off the alarm or the store that it came from. And it went all the way under my fingernail. My thumbnail. Ouch. And I still have nightmares where I feel that, like going under my nail and it turned all bloody with the drill it and stuff to let the pressure out. It was horrible. Oh, yeah. Never want to feel that again. That would be <laughs> What was the question, Ray? Mine? Yes. Yeah. Would you rather stick a toothpick underneath your big toe and kick a soccer ball as hard as you can? Or would you take a metal file, stick it between your teeth, back down as hard as you can, and pull it? Probably the metal file. <laughs> yeah. Man, I have my own teeth. Because uh, here's the thing. Uh, you can think about the metal file and your teeth all you want, but that's a constant reminder. You have to think about it. Where if you just tell me once about a toothpick being in my toenail and I kick a soccer ball, that will linger in my mind for days. <laughs> also, the metal file wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt. It would I'm suck. touching my toes right now. But it wouldn't actually, like, I, don't, I feel like it wouldn't actually be painful. It'd be unpleasant, for sure. And you'd be spitting out tooth dust, which is unpleasant. Think about the aftermath, though. Think about cold air hitting the teeth after you're filed. Think about that pain. You'd probably, you'd probably have to go to the dentist and get some restructure re or repair work done, for sure. Mm. But I mean, if you did this, well, the thing with kicking the soccer ball too, I guess, if depending on the angle you kicked it, it might not go under your nail. It might just break, or it might just fall out. So you do but have I mean, that have, chance that the toothpick would break. Yeah, well, I mean, I've got I've got ingrown toenails on my big toe, so I deal with that hell every day too. So I guess it really wouldn't feel much different. Oh man, <laughs> I had a infected ingrown toenail for like a year. 
oh, that God. on the I sides of the nail, it would constantly yeah. be inflamed and, and pus and stuff is broke. Yeah. I've had that happen, not for a year, but I've had it happen. No, I had to get my uh, the nails cut down on either side of both of my big toes. They put like acid on it or some shit. I had a friend that did that too. They like burned well, it away. The first time that my uh, my then girlfriend, who became my wife, she asked me if I was infected by the T virus. <laughs> <laughs> See, what I started doing is I don't even cut my toenails anymore, so I have like a raptor claw. So. <laughs> Yeah, now I just I use it to like I do like roundhouse kicks, and I use it to my prey. Is it roundhouse kicks, and that's how you open your mail. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, here's the thing too. <laughs> like my neighbors are afraid of me now because they've learned like you're still alive when I start to eat you. You know, I catch you here, and here, and then I go here with my raptor claw. Right? I learned it from Doctor Grant. <laughs> <laughs> And I never attack from the front. I always come from the sides. <laughs> but does anybody call you blue and calm you down? <laughs> yeah, of course. Only, only, uh, only a good-looking man can do that. Not Chris Hemsworth. Who the fuck's his name? Pratt. Chris Pratt. Yeah, only when he wants to mimic the scene from Aliens with just the helmet cams. That's when we, uh, that's when we play that game. <laughs> I also thought of a couple other funny ones that aren't like detrimental to your health, but might make you socially awkward. <laughs> um, I'll wait till Brian gets his headphone on. Okay, this is my last one. Would you rather, in your life, everywhere you go, you are running? Okay. Okay. Or would you rather yell every time you speak? <laughs> What was the first part? What was the first part? Everywhere you go in life, you are running. Or anytime you talk, you are yelling. So if you go into a bank and ask for a deposit, I would like to make a deposit. Uh, definitely the latter. Definitely the latter. If you're sitting on the couch and you want to go get a soda and you are literally sprinting to the kitchen to get yourself a soda. I'd rather do that because I'd be in incredible shape. <laughs> yeah, you'd be in good shape. And honestly, like, that's my life now. You know, sharks got to swim, eagles got to fly. You know? <laughs> Mike's got to run. <laughs> I'm like a screech. If I stop rollerblading, I'll suffocate. So it makes sense. But also, I also yell all the time. So I don't think it's really going to be much different for me. And also, like, I feel like. Go somewhere and you're yelling all the time. They'll just think that you have like mild autism versus like you're trying to rob the bank. And you run. Exactly. Like if you ran into the bank and ran right up to the teller and was breathing heavily. <laughs> My yeah. bank doesn't approve of that. I go in there breathing heavily all the time, and it's a real problem. <laughs> they don't. They don't like that. I think I'd rather be yelling all the time. I yeah. think I would too, because you could actually act like you're deaf. What? Yeah, no, that's definitely true. I feel like it, it's ah! just like just like with the itchy asshole thing. I feel like you would learn to adapt to this new life change because if humanity, if nothing else, is very adaptive, <laughs> so I think that that definitely would be a thing. So here's here's one from that I I read this in a, a board game once that I was playing with uh, an ex girlfriend of mine. Well, she was my girlfriend at the time, and we got in this huge fight. Probably while we're not dating anymore. Would you rather? Swim a mile in the in a shark tank, shark filled tank with chum all over you, or would you rather spend the night in grizzly bear infested woods with meat strapped all over your body? Ooh, raw meat. Uh, uh, the grizzly bear infested woods. Why? Because. <laughs> this is far fetched, but I could climb trees. So can they, though? Yeah, I know, but I could, but I could try to outrun them <laughs> by climbing and hopping from trees like Shia LaBeouf and in Indiana Jones Four. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're always, if you're always running wherever you go, or you're always shouting, you can probably scare the bear or outrun the bear. There you go. Yeah, that's yeah. a possibility. <laughs> what about you, Jared? Dark, that, that's a no-win situation at all. I don't think. Yeah. I think. Okay, so that was kind of my argument with it. But I'll I'll get into that. But what about so you, Jerry? Get broke up? <laughs> no, I mean it might be. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. I think that um, okay. I'll answer. I think that uh, All right. probably the bears because I love you too. Here's the, here's the thing about like swimming with sharks. If you have you know chum all over you. Sharks probably wouldn't kill you. Like they would probably rip off a, a limb, or maybe a few limbs, and you would probably drown to death. And that is one of my biggest fears: is drowning. Like at least if I'm gonna yeah. be on land, I'm gonna at least go fucking um, like Liam Neeson the Gray on these motherfucking bears, like with meat strapped all over to me. I know that there'll be a last stand, and you can scare bears away, especially if you're staring at them and you threaten to fight them. Uh, especially, what? Especially if you're Liam Neeson and you're reciting poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Into the last great battle I've ever known. Live and die on this day, and then just kill you. <laughs> I mean, could I? You know, could I take off a piece of meat and slap the bear in the face with it? Is that a possibility? Because like no. sharks, you really can't slap them with chum. You would just drown. Or you flop around, that more they're going to attack you though while you're swimming. So my my argument. So she said that she would rather swim with the sharks because she can swim fast. I was like, yeah, but sharks can swim faster than you, and they'll kill you. Like even one bite, you're dead because you're in the water. You still got to swim that mile. Yeah. They you you punch can punch a shark in the nose, right? What's that? You punch a shark in the nose, right? Just if knock you're it right out. But and, and you know if you're uh, what's her face um, that played Lara Croft in the movie with the hell's her name Angelina Jolie then you could punch a shark and you'd be totally safe. <laughs> um, my thing is I can't swim very fast. I certainly can't swim as fast as a fucking shark. Same here. Okay. So I feel like if you get bit, no matter what, you're fucked. Like that's a that's a no win right there. Like you're dead. You're already oh. bleeding and trailing blood. And they're gonna be yeah, on exactly. You. Like with a bear, at least you have a chance. It's not a good chance, but it's a possibility. And like Brian said, better. with Brian said, like you can maybe scare off a bear. Probably not, but you know you could do it. Yeah, you stand up to that twelve foot tall monstrosity and go. Yeah, I mean, I'd go totally fucking prophecy on that shit. Like, <laughs> I would probably shit myself and just stand there. Well, yeah, no, to be fair, you could shit in a shark's mouth. They don't like that. <laughs> I never actually saw I'd like to see that research, Ray. <laughs> That's how but Quentin I'm, survives Jaws. He's at, he was gonna be in part five. Did you know that? <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely I think I'd take my chance with a bear, but that was like a fierce argument. And I was like, there's no way you're surviving swimming with sharks. There's no way. <laughs> Bears might not attack you, but sharks certainly will. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, bears probably got different types of priorities throughout the day, where sharks' major priority is eating, food. feeding. Yeah, it's eating. Not, I mean, it's what fish want to do. Well, not Although, to mention, you, know, you might be able to hide from a from a bear for a little bit of time. The sharks in, in water, you got to constantly keep moving, and they're attracted to the motion in the water. I know they're gonna find you. Yeah, they're going to find you really easily. Yep, you can shit yourself and cover yourself in feces, and the bear may not find you. That's true. You can predator it. Predator. Yeah, yeah. Predator. <laughs> no, so I think, well, though, the shark thing, here's an interesting thing we haven't discussed, though. Um, in uh, 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 Lucio, uh, uh, Lucio Fellatio's film Zombie, um, <laughs> there was a zombie that successfully fought off a shark. Now, I know that we're not undead, but I feel like we'd have even better motor skills than one of those. Uh, <laughs> so we'll probably do it. Yeah, I mean, who was like surprised by the nude woman swimming, scuba diving? So, Shark, like, oh, what? That bitch is naked. Yeah, and, he's just like, I'm just here to see some tits. Like, I don't even want to fight this zombie. Plus, it was a tiger shark. Those guys are pussies. Yeah. I don't know. You Back win the day. Uh, you win the day on that one, Mike Lucio Felicio. It is Felicio. He was his famous brother Mario. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Well, this has been a lot of fun, guys. <laughs> I 
must admit. Is there anyone left watching? Is there still anyone standing? Uh, it says one person, but I'm going to wrap this up because I got to work in the morning. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, those who are remaining to join us and those who will watch the rerun of our of THS Lives tonight, uh, it was great to have you on, uh, Mike Lombardo. Um, where could we find your work? And uh, what else would you be representing tonight? Um, well, you can't find my work. Like I said, I won't tell you the name of the uh, the shop. <laughs> if you're talking- well, no, no, it's Domino's. But I mean, I mean your actual. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually on a pizza box. I'm the Noid. Um, like I said, you can find my video game for Sega Genesis. He's um, actually Papa John. Yeah, I, yeah, I am Papa John. You know, that's what they call me. I'm like a sugar daddy for pizza. I'm a Papa John. Um. <laughs> Now, uh, realsplatter.com, that's real with two E's, R-E-E-L, splatter.com. That's where you can find all the latest info on White Doomsday screenings, which I hope to see you guys at. Um, uh, Facebook.com slash realsplatter, and, of course, uh, Facebook.com slash senobun. Um, and then also just regular Facebook, uh, you know. And then we have a YouTube channel, so check that out. It's YouTube.com slash realsplatter. I know if you're noticing a recurring theme here. Um but yeah, so you know we got White Doomsday uh, playing in the festivals. Um, I'll say here too. I also have a short story collection I'm putting together that will be out sometime in the next seven or eight months. Um, so for those of you who didn't know that I write fiction, I write some very very dark, uh, melancholy stuff. So hopefully you guys will check that out eventually. Yeah, because we we know you for your biopics like White Doomsday and Stall. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I've done long pick. Um, also, uh, well, never mind. I won't talk about my adult work, but um, <laughs> no. Yeah, and you have to find on your own on the dark web. His, yeah. uh, his, his name is Leon Kennedy, Sister Act 69. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that when, when uh, the pizza shop's slow and Papa needs to pay his rent, I get back in the habit, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back and count how many times I heard back in the habit today. <laughs> well, my specialty is sister acts. So. Oh, man. So many calls. Like, like an un- I smell an Aerosmith parody cover coming back in the habit again. I hope it's better than their arcade game. <laughs> All right, so let's wrap this up. Uh, my name is Brian Enright. You can follow me at uh, The Hard Jew on Facebook and Instagram. You follow me on Brian Enright. Uh, tonight's episode is brought to you by Red Baron Pizza. And uh, uh, up next, we have Jared Letourneau. Jared. You guys can uh, follow me on Facebook at Jared Letourneau or follow me on the Twatverse at zombie underscore survivor. It was really good getting to talk with you guys tonight. I know it was all over the place, but it was it was a lot of fun. All right. Thank you very much. Last but not least, our president and Fjord, Razor. Yeah, you can find me at uh, Razor underscore 33 on Twitter. Uh, you can check out Apogee Comics for uh, comic book stuff. It's not horror related, but whatever. That's all. All right. Well, oh, thanks for coming. <laughs> hey. Thanks for having me, guys. And speaking of Red Baron, did you see his new film, Cannibal Ferox? <laughs> it's great. I own it on blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, this thanks has been for a- being this- with us, Mike. Man, always a good time to see you. Always fun talking with you, buddy. Always. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck at New-, new Jersey Horror Con. Thank you. I'll see you there, and we'll uh, we'll 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 sing some songs together. And crossroads. I'll, I'll wear my see Santa, you? uh, my Santa sex slave outfit, and uh, just stand outside your movie while it's playing. Well, Daddy Christmas is gonna be there, so you better wear it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this thank you for everyone for joining us. This is our first episode of THS Lives. And uh, we can't wait to bring you back much, much more horror for the rest of the year. So thanks for joining us, and uh, everyone have a great, wonderful night. Thank you. All right, we stop streaming.